Good evening, everyone. Good evening, uh, Hopkinton. And uh, welcome to the uh, Board of Selectmen meeting uh, here Tuesday, May 17th. Um, I'd like to first start off by welcoming our two new members, Claire Wright and um, Brendan Tedstone. Congratulations. Congratulations. Welcome to the board. And now, uh, as per uh, usual, let's uh, do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, as per the uh, first meeting after uh, elections, we uh, will begin our reorganization and the chairman will entertain a motion to name Brian Herr as uh, the new chair of the Board of Selectmen who is here. So moved. moved. Do we have a second? S second. Excellent. Any further discussion? Hearing none, how do you vote? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Still carries. Okay, thank you. Let's change seats. Oh, uh, we want to change seats, all right. Do I have to answer your phone? You? Your glasses are just gone. Okay, so now that we have a chair in place for FY18, right, uh, we'll entertain motions for a vice chair for the Board of Selectmen for FY18. That's the nominator, John Coutinho, please. I'll second it. Vice chair. Second. And a second for John Coutinho for vice chair. Any other nominations? Hearing none, any discussion on the nomination of votes? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations, Mr. Catino. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, so I just wanted to sort of tag on real quick with, uh, with, with what Mr. Catino started out with by congratulating our two new members, Mrs. Ray and Mr. Tenstone. Uh, we had a great election cycle this year. We had four candidates for the Board of Selectmen for two open seats. I want to thank the other candidates that ran. Uh, I thought the campaigns were done extremely well. And people uh, did a nice job out there talking to voters. Uh, it didn't get into any sort of crazy circus act like we see at other levels of the political process these days. Uh, so congratulations to all the candidates and thank them for their running uh, for office as well for the Board of Selectmen. And to all the other offices in town too. Uh, I want to do a quick shout out to Mr. Sonnet and Dr. Carlin for their years of service, actually their decades of service to the town of Hopkinton. Uh, they've done great things for the community and we hope they stay close and continue to participate in the process. They've got some great experience, and we, uh, we really appreciate all they've done so far and hope they'll continue to serve uh, in many ways in the years to come. Uh, so with that, why don't we continue into our agenda for this Mr. Chair. Mr. Sestari. I know that there were also uh, a couple of other incumbents that did seek re-election uh, that uh, were not successful, and they don't get the, the fanfare of submitting a letter of resignation and being recognized for their efforts either, but I'd also like to uh, recognize them and thank them for their service and uh, encourage them to continue in their involvement in the community. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. So um, I sat in the center chair uh, in 2000 FY9 and FY10, so I have flown the ship before. Uh, but I don't recall where all the controls are here, so if I start to take this in the wrong, in the wrong direction, uh, please feel free to jump in, as I know okay. uh, many of you will. <laughs> uh, next up, public session. This is an opportunity uh, for the public to address the board and share any concerns, thoughts, or ideas they may have uh, regarding their town government. Oh. Mrs. Ritterbush. 
just want to make you aware that I have a, I applied for the planning board seat, but I have a design review board meeting at 7.30, and I'm needed to make the quorum, so I'm not going to be here when you discuss the planning board vacancies. So I just want to make sure you're aware of that, and if, if you need me to step out of that room to come back for questions, I can. Okay. But I, but I tried to give as much information as I could in the application. Okay, so if you could hold for one second, I think this is something we want to try and at least to discuss for a moment now. We don't have the full board for that group or for that discussion, but we're going to be interviewing each of the candidates that are going to come for that position, right? So do we want her to come back, do you think, or do we want I, her? I, I would think so, uh, Mr. Chair. I think that it would be uh, beneficial uh, to Ms. Ritterbush and, and also for the board uh, so that we have an opportunity to ask any questions. So we have that scheduled for 7.40 p.m. this evening, correct? Yes. It's not a public hearing, so it might be a little bit off that timeline. Okay. Uh, but what time does your meeting start? 7.30. 7.30. Could you, could you come back after you get your quorums established and maybe go through the agenda or whatever it is you're going to do and maybe come back up by 7.50 or so? 7.50. And then we'll try and take you as soon as possible thereafter. Okay. Yeah, I guess, yeah, where, where is your meeting? Just right down the hall. Okay, yeah, we can, we can get okay. you. Thank you. Actually, yeah, why don't you stay in there and we'll have someone come down when we're ready. Okay. Okay? That, that, I appreciate Great. it. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate Thanks. you bringing that up. Okay, anybody else like to address the board for any reason? I see movement in the audience here. And as always, if we could get names and addresses like we do at town meeting, that would be great. Mr. Chairman, Bob Levinson, 13 Smith Road, former chair of the personnel committee and former chair of the ill-fated fire chief search committee. Um, I would just like to say that uh, kind of echoing what you said, uh, Mr. Sestari and Mr. Her, and uh, what Chief Slayman said uh, when he was appointed a while ago, that uh, the last several months haven't been the easiest for certain reasons, and I think he had it a lot tougher than us, but it was a little challenging for me as well. And um, to have the outcome with the chief uh, is wonderful. And kind of, again, echoing what you said, people stepping up to participate, get involved in town government or volunteering, it's just, it's very gratifying. I love the way the uh, community stepped up. And I think uh, by two new members, it's a great uh, echoing of that as well. So I just want to acknowledge that and welcome you to the, uh, the board. Thank great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Bob. Anybody else? OK. Next item on the agenda, staff recognition. We do all kinds of interesting things at the Board of Selectmen level. Um, some are kind of mundane and boring. Some are somewhat contentious and a little aggravating at times. Uh, and every now and then we get to celebrate something. And tonight uh, we get to celebrate a great accomplishment by one of our, accomplishment by one of our uh, staff members, Denise Hildreth, who just recently received her PhD. And, uh, you know, we're fortunate to have her on the team, and we want to take a few minutes to recognize her uh, for that great accomplishment. Uh, we'd like to learn a little bit more, although we've heard it a little bit in the past, we'd like to learn a little bit more about uh, her PhD work and uh, see how it will help Hopkinton move forward. So with that, Denise, thank you very much for thank coming you. tonight, and congratulations on your PhD. Thank you. I want to thank my family for standing by me through eight and a half years. Um, it was a grind and really tough to finish while raising a family and working full time. So thank you. And thank you for allowing them to be here to get some recognition for helping me through it too, especially my husband who really pulled me through and didn't let me quit. So that's what I'd like to say. Thank you. Great. Can you tell us a little bit about your PhD work? Sure. So it's a PhD in clinical social work from Simmons College. And the topic of my dissertation was homicide, bereavement, and employment. So um, interviewing through long interviews, family members of homicide victims in Dorchester, Mattapan, and Roxbury, hearing their stories and specifically looking at the interaction between traumatic loss and employment. So I interviewed people that were specifically employed at the time that the death occurred and looked at how their need to grieve impacted their ability to work and really wanting to impact the way in which we look at bereavement leave policy. So in the United States, we don't get much time off to bereave the loss of a loved one, even if that loss is something that is you know, expected, someone is old, someone is sick. So specifically, when something like this happens tragically, you know, we're expected to be back at work within three to five days. And within three to five days, some of these family members had barely identified bodies. And they were also cleaning up crime scenes, sometimes that happened right on their doorsteps sometimes through gang violence, and specifically looking at the ways in which that really impacted their lives. Fantastic. Good for you. Let's go across the board if we could for a minute. Mr. Sestari, do you have any thoughts or questions? Doctor. 
Thank you. Okay, what's the appropriate uh, surname now? Is it Dr. Denise? <laughs> <laughs> but it's Dr. De Norman. Yeah, right? it's Dr. <laughs> um, you know, I've exchanged a few emails with Denise in the past at times where the board may have been questioning uh, some of the direction, direction that she wanted to take the department. And, uh, you know, I, I tried to assure her that, um, you know, nobody was trying to be critical and that, and that, you know, we really did like the direction, but sometimes we uh, just had to have a discussion of whether it was within the town's uh, scope of what we want to do. And she assured me that uh, she wasn't taking any offense by it and it doesn't hurt her feelings, you know, and those aren't your words, but, uh, you know, basically something like that. And now I listen to what she's been uh, doing her dissertation on and I understand that you know the, the things that we discuss here seem so trivial uh, compared to uh, the people that she's been dealing with and, and what they've gone through um, congratulations um, you know I know that you've been you've been working for town for six eight months now and uh, you know other than that I, I, I don't know you extremely well but at the same time I'm very proud of you thank you and uh, congratulations Appreciate it. So, this is right. Yeah, congratulations, Denise, and, and more than just congratulations, I, I just want to express my incredible admiration and respect for what you've done. Um, just the amount of, the sheer amount of work and sacrifice that goes into a PhD program is laudable in and of itself, but then to hear the, the focus of your study um, is really is really humbling um, and you know even though the focus of your study often was within urban environments where much of this situation happens um, it, it does relate to Hoppington and, and in the you know, years of this town that I recall um, this lovely quiet idyllic suburban community we've been touched mm -hmm. um, by some very tragic very jarring events and um, you know, it, it, thankfully, it doesn't happen in this community with the same kind of frequency as the communities you studied. Um, but we've learned that nobody is immune from these things. And so the kind of training you've received and um, the courage to take that on is, is extremely commendable. So I thank you, and we thank you for being here. Thank you. Mr. Catino. So but mine's going to start off a little weird. I, I want to thank the the town hall staff because for, for finding Denise because I, I when we lost the person before you there were some big shoes to fill and some great um, programs were started and and um, for, for them to find you and thank you for coming and and for taking it to taking it to the to another level um, you know it was uh, when when the vacancy happened I didn't think it could even be taken to another level and sure enough you you are and you're doing a, doing great work and and thank you very much thank you. dr denise thanks well i have a kind of a unique uh, situation here where i've known denise uh, our whole lives we grew up together uh her putting eight and a half years in to reach this goal is not a shock to me uh i know that your dad put a, would have put a boot in your pants if you if you didn't do it uh, <laughs> And, uh, and your husband, the same thing. So um, I'm super excited to have you here. Uh, I'm super excited to have the person filling that position, uh, someone that knows the town. And I'm super excited that that person that knows the town is a McBride, or Hildreth, Hildreth now, but uh, was a McBride. And, and, uh, and welcome. And we're lucky to have someone like you. Thank you. So we've got names and faces kind of in the audience here, but could you just sort of do a sure. quick intro for us? So my husband, Michael, daughter, Madeline, my mom, Elizabeth, my dad, George, and my son, Sam. Great. Thank you all for being here tonight, too. You should be very proud. I'm sure you are. Denise, thank, thank you, you for coming tonight. Congratulations on I your appreciate PhD. It. It's a great accomplishment. We look forward to working with you for many years to come. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Okay, uh, so we have a consent agenda that goes on for a little bit here. Uh, the consent agenda for our new members is basically what we would call administrative actions um, that we typically can move through somewhat quickly. 
and I'm probably jinxing it by saying that. I know that one of the administrative actions tonight is to approve a bond for about $16 million, so maybe we want to think about breaking that one out. Uh, but really, it's just stuff that we can kind of routinely approve sort of in a lump sum. If there's one item on the consent agenda that you don't want to include in a lump sum or a one, vote, uh, one motion, one vote process, uh, we break that out. So the consent agenda is in front of us. Uh, I'll just tell you what it is real quick. We've got some minutes from uh, public session minutes from 426. We have bond action uh, from pursu pursuant to various articles of the 2016 annual town meeting. The board will consider approving a bond in the amount of $16,671,549 for various capital projects approved at respective town meetings. There's a, two parade permits, I think, right? Uh, the Board of Selection Parade Permit for Stephanie Whale in the 13th Annual Sharon Timlin Road Race for Q ALS. And for a five, the 5K Road Race will be held rain or shine on June 18th. And then there's a parade permit for Kathy Lundgren of Greyhound Friends for a 5K Race Walk on Saturday, June 25th at 9 a.m. Um, neither of these require road closures. There's a parade permit. There's three of them for Ricardo Barraza, the race director of the 19th Annual Michaels 5K Run and Walk on Saturday, October 15th from 10 to 2. And then finally, the board will consider following appointment uh, Kevin Nathan as an at-large member, at member of the Veterans Celebration Committee for a three-year term to expire on June 30th, 2018. Does anybody want to break any of those out? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to break out the parade permits. Parade permits, so we'll take out. And given the amount, I suppose we should also discuss the bond. And I know this is funny, but I'd also I'd like to pull out four to uh, recognize uh, Kevin. Okay, so we're going to take out four. <coughs> okay, so we're back to the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Which two people probably won't vote on. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> So much for the consent agenda. Okay, so we have item one on the consent agenda. Some uh, public session minutes from 426. I'll entertain, uh, entertain a motion to approve those minutes, please. So moved. Second. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, second item, we have a bond. This is the one I mentioned a moment ago. Pursuant to various articles in the 2016 town meeting, the board will consider approving a bond in the amount of $16 million $671,549 for various capital projects approved at respective town meetings. So just to clarify, uh, the Board of Selectmen's role in this process now, town meeting runs the show. We're a town meeting form of government, right? And then we implement policies set forth by town meeting and the budget set forth by town meeting and the capital article expenditures are set forth by town meeting. And then we just approve the actual taking of the bar, getting the bond to finance the projects. Mm -hmm. It's a very straightforward process, even when it's $16 million. We don't have a whole lot to say about it. I'm sure this interest rate on this bond can be spoken to quite quickly here, uh, but it's a pretty, uh, pretty straightforward process. Does anyone have any questions specific to the bond? Who broke this out? Uh, I broke it out, actually. Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I just felt that uh, if we could get a quick overview uh, what this is funding, um, just for transparency and the fact that we're not just approving $16 million without knowing. Okay. I know we have some visitors with us probably to address this. Mr. Kamalo, over to you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think first off, I need to share with the board as well as with the residents at home that as part of this process, uh, we went through the regular review standard and pause. And via that process, the town's credit rating of AAA plus was reaffirmed. Uh, so that's good news. Uh, and without further ado, through the chair, if you may allow, the, uh, the treasurer as well as the CFO are here to give you the details of the borrowing. Thank you. Please. Hello. Um, we have several um, items which we permanently bonded. This will be, this will be an issue of a permanent bond. Um, many of these have been borrowed previously. You'll see some of them that are from FY13, FY14, FY15. If the money was needed because the project began, we will issue what's called the band, with, band which um, you probably know already is just a temporary up to one year borrowing. This takes some of that borrowing and permanently borrows it. 
along with um, issues some debt for the first time, but it just coincides so it saves money by including it in this issue instead of issuing a separate temporary debt and, until we decide to bond it permanently later. Um, we don't borrow the entire amount for every project. We carefully consider every project, talk with the department heads and uh, project managers to ensure that we are not all over borrowing and that we keep our borrowings to a minimum until we absolutely need the money. Great, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mr. Catino. Yeah, I'm trying to spot the interest rate in here on the document. Is there, is there a specific one, or, is, or, or do we have different interest rates by uh, the different? Well, the winning bid was uh, was uh, Robert Bard Company, Robert W. Bard Company. Uh, they came in with a uh, a net of 2.075 interest rate and a premium of one. One million eighty-six thousand three hundred seventy-eight dollars and twenty-three cents, giving us a net interest cost of three million ninety-nine thousand six hundred fifty-three thousand eighty-nine for the entire bond, which was the lowest interest that we would pay over the length of the bond. So they were the winning bidder. Okay, thank you. Anything else? That's it. Thank you, Mr. Katik, Mr. Tedstone. Anything? I'm good. Good. This is right. Good. You good? Um, yeah, so I just wanted to comment. So this, and I'm, not, I'm not being critical. I like this format. Uh, it's just a different format than what we've seen in the past uh, where we get to see each individual bid, which I think is great. Um, and then on the last page, I just want my understanding to be clear, is the list of projects that this is funding. That's is correct. That correct. Yes. And so it looks like, uh, you know, the, the voting dates just for everybody's edification. Um, range from back in 2012 through 2015. So, you know, some of these projects are things that have been approved, you know, over the last several years, um, none of which have been too recent. You know, the most recent is a year ago. Um, and, uh, yeah, everything from from uh, DPW facility to different roof, roofs, uh, fixing the loop roads, sidewalks, etc. cetera. So um, some of the big items were... Looks like school roofs, uh, the Fruit Street fields uh, through the CPA, uh, sidewalks, and land acquisitions. So, uh, you know, this all looks good to me. Okay, thank you. So the chair will entertain a motion to approve the bond request uh, for sixteen million seven hundred seven seven sixteen million six hundred and seventy one thousand five hundred forty nine dollars for various capital projects approved at respective town meetings. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Parade permits. The first is for a parade permit uh, um, for the 13th annual Sharon Timlin Road Race to cure ALS. It's a 5K road race to be held rain or shine on June 18th at 8.30 a.m., starting at the Hopkins School Road and ending at the Loop Road. Uh, who broke it out, please? Uh, I broke it out. I only have a question on item B under the parade permits. And is the chief here? Um, I'm, I'm looking at this and noticing that it's going to be starting and ending on Saddle Hill Road. And it says that there are road closures. Uh, are we closing the length of Saddle Hill Road or what? what closure is involved here yeah um, my lieutenant John Porter he made uh, certain uh, comments on that he's been dealing with this uh, for a while now and uh, it's his recommendation that we don't have to fully close Saddle Hill Road so he was requesting that the uh, organizers get with, get together with him again and we can uh, discuss options without fully closing uh, uh, Saddle Hill Road there might be a, a short period of time where there would be a temporary thing, but there's no need to close the whole road down. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess that was my biggest concern is it's a pretty lengthy Absolutely. piece of road. Yeah. And, A, if you start going down it and then you have to do a U-turn in someone's driveway, that's not too convenient. But, uh, but we'll, we'll certainly work with them and uh, ensure that that's not, not okay. the case. Okay. And we'll have Thank adequate you. personnel. Great. Thanks, Chief. So, Mrs. Wright. Yeah, well, through you, Mr. Chair, I, um, I guess it would be a question for the chief 
Chief Lee, sorry. Come back. <laughs> um, I'm not particularly familiar with how these road races are organized. Um, I don't know how long it takes to run a, a three-mile, a 5K. I'm noticing the next one, the, the Michaels, they're looking for a four-hour road closing. How long are they looking for for this 9 a.m. 3K race? Usually it's approximately four hours. And that's four the hours. And if, uh, if, uh, if it's done without a road closing, how do they do that? Do they ro like mark off a part of the road where single lane traffic could get through? Or how could they do that? Because I noticed um, Officer Porter's comments that mm -hmm. he recommended no closings as well. He said the inconvenience to both the golf course and the road residents for that period of time you know, is a little unacceptable. How would we manage that? to do a non-road closing and still let it happen. Now we'd be able, able to uh, you know, utilize one lane and then still able to get traffic through without okay. interfering too much with the race. It's not, it's not uh, uh, one, of, one of the larger races that, that you'd see, but we certainly had experience in the past with these areas before where we were able to do it without closing down the road uh, through personnel and uh, blocking off uh, certain side streets for certain periods of time. and. Um, and keeping a lane open. Okay, so now I don't want to miss mix items, but it's the same kind of question. Looking at the at the next one with a road closing on Ash Street, um, could that be done in the same way, or with the use of the sidewalk so that that road is kept open as well? Yes, it could. Yeah, I, Mr. Chairman, when we would issue a parade permit. Would that be something that's conditioned, or is that just a blanket permit and it's left to be worked out with the police as to the logistics? Because I think these races are great, but <coughs> having said that, the inconvenience to residents on a Saturday for four hours of road closures, um, I find problematic. I'd like to find a way so that that, that doesn't have to happen. That's a long period of time. So. Uh it's a good question. We can do, uh, you know, issue a permit with a contingency or a qualification that we get further, you know, information or the police chief gets it set up in a certain way. Um, you know, when I read it out earlier, I was incorrect because I said there were no road closures for the first two. There is one for the second one, for B, and item C, it doesn't really speak to whether there's a road closure or not, uh, at least on the agenda. So um, I think it's something we want to clarify. Okay. On the, on the um, if you look into the agenda attachments it does say road closures ash Thayer heights and yeah Uber. yeah okay so we'll want to note that for road closures right on the agenda because that to your point about the neighbors seeing these things yeah. well and people who live on the street too. right right, right. <laughs> so the reason they're four hours at least from my viewpoint and i've run a bunch of these things right. is it's the setup time it's the start of the race which is typically a 45 minute process just to get everybody in and out, right. out, the, out the gate and then there's the race itself then there's the cleanup time so I don't know if it has to be closed the entire time. The roads don't have to be closed the entire time, but in the area where they start and finish, I can see a four-hour window easily. Okay. So again, Mr. Chair, and you are a runner, so you can speak to this. When I ran, a slow mile was 10 minutes, so three miles would be at me. minimum of 30. So for a reasonable person who's walking, you're probably looking at what, a minimum of an hour, hour and a half? Yeah, for a 5K. You know, an hour before, an hour race, an hour after, that's three hours right there, easy. Yeah, so. well, no, but, but you're saying that the setup takedown time doesn't need a road closing. You might, the only time it needs to be closed is when there's people in the road. Yeah, and that's all the time that they would close the roads, actually, too. Is that correct? Absolutely. Not necessarily having road closures, like was being requested at Saddle Hill. That, you know, that would be inconvenience or road closures to shut down throughout the entire race. You'll have temporary disruptions across the race, both offices blocking off traffic to let the runners go by and then moving the traffic into a different direction. Okay. But, and, and that's why I think specifically we're addressing Saddle Hill. Where we'll, we'll still be able to do that uh, without uh, actually closing the whole road down. Okay. Good? I'm good. So okay. there's a way to let it happen. Any other uh, thoughts on the parade permits and the clarifications about road closures or non-road closures? Um, Chief, do, does your department, do you or, or um, uh, anybody else in the department have any misgivings with respect to the particular location uh, and any volume limitations, uh, so runners? Uh, so, you know, having 30 runners, 300 is another. Um, 
you know, I, I, at least I don't recall this race being run before, and I certainly want to encourage it. I think that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a, a, a good cause, um, but at the same time, I want to make sure that we're running things through you and uh, you're, you're comfortable with everything that's being done. Absolutely. The, the Timlin run, we've worked very well with them, and most of the race is on the, the loop road, so it's not really a, an issue. Uh, Michael's race, we certainly uh, uh, we have that down, and we, we don't have any problems. We, we really don't, I don't recall any complaints from any of the residents on, on that particular route, but as you say, this is a different situation, and that's why we just want to make sure we're all on the same page and uh, how it's going to be run and that we can certainly do it looking at the uh, the roads and the personnel and the amount of runners uh, we were able to establish that we could do it in a safe manner and still prevent the road from being shut down inconveniencing all the neighbors and golf courses things of that nature um, mr. chairman and, and uh, <coughs> to the other board members as well I guess yeah. my personal preference would be for us to move forward with a and C but I'd like to see item B be vetted further with the police department um, so that uh, we're, we're approving it at a point where the police department is comfortable with any types of closures and volume considerations, and we move forward from there. Okay. Any other thoughts on the parade permits? Um, Mr. Chair, I, I continue to have difficulties as well um, with Ash Street because uh, the B route that goes through Highland Park these are fairly wide, low traffic subdivision roads that I could see those could easily accommodate this kind of a race and still allow cars to get through. But Ash Street is a very narrow, long, windy road that has a lot of traffic on it, unfortunately. And, and I want these permits to go through. I just want it, I want to make sure that the logistics are addressed with the police so that traffic does have a route because Ash Street is not the same kind of a road as Greenwood. Are you on C for Ash Street? Yeah, and yeah. maybe we should be mixing them up, but, you know, the, ty the type of road enters into the con inconvenience factor as well. Okay. Anybody else? So perhaps uh, the motion the chair should entertain would be that we approve the parade permits for item A as written and item C as written, uh, assuming that the road closures will be at a minimum uh, and that the police chief and his department uh, is well organized around those two particular races and comfortable with those two races? Correct. Correct. Okay. So is that, would you entertain that motion? I would. So you would so move that motion? I would so move that motion. No. So moved. <laughs> okay. Is there a second? I will second that. Thank you. Any further discussion on items A and C under parade permits? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Item B, Mr. Sestari, do you want to suggest a little bit more feedback there for the chief, and then we'll try and talk to schedule for a minute, because that's coming up fast here. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, I mean, I would just, I would just say that uh, um, Greyhound Friends and the police department should sync up, uh, make sure that everybody's good with whatever road closures you are willing to recommend and accept uh, for safety and and also I think I would you know well again you're you're the person who's in charge of the safety mm -hmm. but uh, I would think that volume would be taken into consideration as well absolutely Mr. Kamala with that B item uh, hopping out for a few days here what's our schedule like in the next month or so or actually in the next couple of weeks in terms of getting this back before us in a timeline that would work for them to continue with their race preparations yeah, the next scheduled board meeting will be June 7th. June 7th. Okay. So we, we will certainly work with the chief to get his final comments on this request before the board for that meeting. So, so this item will come back to us on June 7th. Does yeah. That sound okay? You know, M Mr. Chair, I'm, I personally, I know I can't speak for the others on the board, I'm okay with moving forward with approving this as long as um, the final arrangements uh, are, are at the chief's discretion, um, you know, in terms of safety. Is that a motion? So uh, I'm fine with making a motion, a uh, motion to approve item B uh, at the discretion of the chief of police with respect to safety as it comes to road closures and volume of participants. Okay. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any discussion on the motion? 
All set. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, A, B, C done. Item four, we broke you out. Uh, we want to make sure we recognize Mr. Nathan. Yeah, I, I got to, um, Mr. Nathan, come up a sec. I just want to thank him. You know, this, he came up for an appointment uh, a few meetings ago, and we asked him if he would uh, please uh, stick with it and try to uh, do something else or or stick with the same board, and, and I'm just glad to see you uh, back up here and, and uh, doing your part. So I just wanted to recognize you and say uh, thanks very much for stepping back in. And to Thank you. I really, I really appreciate the consideration. Um, that's, re that's really all I want to do because it's, yeah, this is, this is the, you know, the, the, the young blood that we're trying to get involved in all of these, uh, on all our committees and boards, and, and uh, really appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin, thank you for stepping up. We really appreciate it and uh, look forward to uh, moving this along. Okay, so item four on the consent agenda was the board to consider the following appointment. Mr. Kevin Nathan as an at-large member of the Veterans Celebration Committee for a three-year term to expire on June 30th, 2018. So moved. Second. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to approve Mr. Nathan as a member of the Veterans Celebration Committee. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, uh, moving right along here, um, staff appointments. Item five on our agenda, We're signing, uh, signing a contract between the town and the fire chief, Mr. Stephen Slammon. Mr. Kamal. Yes, the request for the board is administrative. Uh, the board did approve the terms of the contract uh, with Chief Slammon. Uh, and I'm happy to report that Chief Slayman and the previous chair of the Board of Selectmen did sign the contract and this is required by law and that's why I said this is administrative. The board needs to make a public vote accepting the contract. <clears throat> okay. Does everybody understand what's before us? Any questions on the process? Okay. Does anybody want to make a motion uh, that the board enter and, and sign the contract between the town and Fire Chief Stephen Slammon. So moved. Okay. Second. And second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Congratulations, Chief Slammon. You are now under contract. <laughs> okay, Mr. Kamal, are you good with that item? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Next item, it's number six. The Board of Selectmen will consider accepting the resignation, accept the resignation of Robert Auclair from the Council on Aging. Anybody have any questions specific to item number six? The board will entertain a the chair will entertain a motion to accept the resignation of Robert Auclair from the Council on Aging. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank Mr. O'Claire for, uh, for his service on that. Yeah, and if we could be sure to get out uh, a letter to Mr. O'Claire thanking him for his service as well on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. Mr. Kamala. Thank you, sir. So, Mr. Chair, um, I'm reading the top part of this email, and there's a, a um, suggestion that they've they've uh, they've nominated somebody to be the replacement okay is that uh, is that so done? we'll take that up at another time at another okay. meeting that'll come before us as a there's a process we'll follow to okay. kind of get there excellent pickup yep. we'll have that uh, probably at the next meeting if good. not the meeting after good okay thank you uh, thank you for the question okay so we have a motion in front of us to accept the resignation of Robert R. Claire all those in favor aye, aye. any opposed thank you Item number seven Zero East Main Street, uh, the Methodist Church property. This is an administrative action. The board and town manager will consider exercising authority granted by the town meeting vote to acquire the Methodist Church property on East Main Street and approve the appraisal prepared by W.H. King Realty Appraisal from West Brookfield, Massachusetts. Mr. Kamal. Yes, um, you will recall that under Article 31D, funded through CPC, uh, town meeting authorized uh, the town manager as well as the board of selectmen to acquire this parcel. 
we also, prior to town meeting, had uh, requested and received an appraisal. Uh, the appraisal came out at 42,000. Uh, town meeting appropriated 50,000, and part of that 50,000 will be used for closing costs. And so, what we are asking the board tonight is to decide whether you would like to work with the town manager and exercise the authority granted to the board uh, to complete the purchase of this parcel. And then secondly, uh, we are asking the board to accept the appraisal, the reason being when we uh, set the conditions for purchasing this parcel prior to town meeting, we stated that we will only complete, the town will only complete the purchase of this parcel if the selectmen accept the appraisal. Okay, so I, I heard two numbers there, 42,000 and 50,000, correct? 42,000 is the appraised value, 50,000 is what town meeting authorized up to. Yes, and 42,000 is what the town will be paying. 42,000 what will be paying. Does that include closing costs? If, if we're counting the closing costs associated with paying councils, no. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have two action items, correct? You want us to accept the appraisal at $42,000, and then you want us to take an action to authorize the town manager to, 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 to complete the transaction. That is correct. Okay. Anyone have any thoughts, questions, concerns specific to this item? You know, my only question, Mr. Uh, Chair, uh, through you. Uh, asking the town manager, could you just give me a, a basic timeline of events? Um, so I'm noticing here that the appraisal actually happened in April of 2015. Um, you know, the report is effective, I think it was March 30th of 2016. Uh, it all seems very drawn out, and, and I'm just trying to understand the process a little bit better, I guess. Because... A lot of times, if you have an appraisal that's done a year ahead of time, it's not really viewed as, you know, a current appraisal. So I'm just trying to figure that out. Through the chair. Uh, in fact, what happened was the, um, the, the trails, the Upper Charles, Upper Charles Trails Committee had requested a preliminary save, a, um, appraisal prior to the negotiations beginning. And then when the negotiations proceeded and we received preliminary indications from CPC that they would be willing to recommend town meeting funding for this purchase, we then requested the actual appraisal, which was performed just before town meeting. Okay. And I want to be clear. I'm not, I'm not concerned with the figure. Um, uh, you know, if anything, I would say that over the last year, property values have gone up. So that would say that we're getting a deal at this point. Um, but, uh, I, you know, again, just trying to understand that process. Thanks. Anybody else have any other questions or thoughts specific to this item? All good? I, I just want to comment that I understand the time frame because having worked with CPC proposals, it gets voted at town meeting, but there's a very long process, preliminary process, and the CPC proposals are due in October. And... You know they can flesh it out and, and you know tweak those during the during the review process. But basically, the applicant has to have their ducks in a row in October. So it makes perfect sense that you'd need to start to get some hard numbers back in the spring if you were looking to put a proposal together. Um, CPC would not want to see just a blanket proposal for a piece of land without any real numbers attached. So, mm -hmm. you know, I understand the concern that as time passes, appraisals are no longer, you know, considered accurate. But given our CPC process, this is the way it works in the timeline. Okay. Anything else? So the chair will entertain a motion to accept the appraisal uh, prepared by W.H. King Realty and Appraisal from West Brookfield, Massachusetts for 0 East Main Street, the Methodist Church property. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any further discussion? All those in favor of accepting the appraisal, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Secondly, for this item number seven, uh, the town manager is requesting that the Board of Selectmen authorize him to finalize the transaction based on the appraisal and the town meeting vote. 
And in fact, if I may, through you, the Chair, I can provide the language for the motion. Please. To authorize the town manager to complete negotiations and execute a purchase and sale agreement between the inhabitants of the town of Hopkinton and the New England Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church for the purchase of the property located at 0 East Main Street, Hopkinton, Mass., further described in Nicholas's South Registry of Deeds Book 50265, page 61. That's so an moved. excellent motion you just made, Mr. Kamalo. <laughs> so moved. Is there a motions document for tonight, by the way, <laughs> for anything else? Do we have a motions document? No, we did not prepare okay. one. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion and a second, all right, for Mr. Kamal to get it done, all right, in so many words. Any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're all set there. Good, Mr. Kamal? Good, thank you. Excellent, thank you. Okay, item number eight on the agenda is a nighttime traffic improvement. There's going to be some nighttime traffic improvement work on West Main Street. And uh, we'd like to discuss that for a few minutes. Uh, Rob Hewitt, the Senior Managing Director of Mill Creek Residential, <coughs> requests that we approve some limited traffic improvement work on West Main Street at night, sometime in mid-May to early June. The anticipation is that the work will be striping and pavement resurfacing and will take place between 8 p.m. and 3.30 a.m. on two to three nights. Okay, Mr. Hewitt, please. I'm actually Carolyn Mendel. I'm here on Rob's behalf from Mill Creek Residential. Uh, we're the ownership entity. So essentially this is in relation to the Hopkinton Muse uh, community that's under construction now off of Lumber Street. Uh, we have some off-site road work improvements on both West Main Street and Lumber Street that were approved as part of our comprehensive permit. And then the town actually signed off on the uh, detailed roadwork plans in January of this past year. Um, we met with the uh, police department, fire department, and DPW uh, on April 29th to discuss the possibility of doing some of this work at night in order to decrease the amount of impact that it had on daily traffic. Um, and uh, we, we had so support from those groups, and so we were told to come before you guys and hopefully get permission for that work. Great. And I have with me here tonight Rhonda Rozier from MDM Traffic Consulting if you guys have any questions about the specifics of that work. But all in line with the expectations of the planning board and the, pro the approval process to date. Correct. Okay. Why don't we start down here. Any questions on this particular issue? Um, so it's two to three nights. Is this area an area that's going to impact some homeowners, impact their sleep? No, the, the work, and um, Ron actually has uh, some plans that he can pass out that show the extent of the limits of the work. Um, are, I think there may be one home on West Main that may be affected, uh, but this is uh, around the intersection of West Main and Lumber where it's primarily commercial uses. I think that homeowner is here tonight, too. <laughs> he is <Yes>. indeed. <laughs> on a separate matter, I, I think. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Ted Stone? Uh, give me we a second. Come back to you. Let me take a quick look. Okay, Mr. Catino. Uh, so this is this is only striping. This isn't a grinding or uh, putting in any. Uh, it's lectures. actually it's, it's actually two phases of work. Ron DeRoger again from MDM Transportation Consultants. Uh, there will be uh, there's, there's two plans. There. One shows the milling operation, which is which is on the first sheet, and the second is actually the. Uh, the pavement markings, which will occur on the second part of it. So the milling and paving uh, will require two nights. So one night for the milling, one night for the paving, and then two nights for the, for the uh, pavement markings. And as Carolyn had mentioned, the, the whole purpose of this is uh, to get the work done a little bit quicker than we typically could do during the day because of the traffic that's on the roadway. We're expecting that we'll, uh, we'll be able to cut the construction period in half if we can do that, and that's why we're here tonight. Anything else? Mrs. Wright. Well, I, you know, I do know there is a homeowner right on that corner there, and it seems that the resurfacing is the one that makes the most noise, is most disruptive. Um, I think I would request two things. I would request that that homeowner who is right behind you, Mr. Kistner, be given some advance notice as to the dates that the work will take place. Um, if there is any, um, and I would also 
suggest requesting that if there is any uh, discretion in what is done when or, you know, I don't know how long these processes take. Uh, clearly, there's a homeowner there. Stuff that's done at 8 at night is not going to have the same impact as things that are done after midnight. So perhaps you could prioritize based on that there is a home right, right there. Yeah, so as I mentioned, um, there'll be one night. It'll take one complete night from probably 8 to 3.30 just to do the milling operation. Then we'll probably have a couple days, two or three days, where there won't be any work at all that happened during the day. We'll be adjusting some castings. We'll be cutting the vehicle sensors that are in the roadway pavement. And then they'll come back, and it'll actually take a whole other night to resurface the roadway in that area. So then we'll actually go probably three or four days without any work at all occurring um, at night or, or during the day because we have to let the pavement set up before we put the pavement markings down. And that'll take two nights to do that. So the, the noisy part of the operation as you're getting at would be the actual milling portion of it and probably the noise from the trucks when they're paving. The pavement marking part is a fairly quiet operation. It does, you know, it'll be a lot of lights and stuff, but there won't be a lot of noise associated with it. Coordinate with the neighbor, please, who's standing beside sure. you. <laughs> okay. Anything else? That's it. Mr. Sestari. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I recall that, uh, I don't know if it was maybe a year or two years ago, uh, there was something similar happening on the other end of town near Legacy Farms. And I do recall that we had some of the neighbors come in, and they had some comments around, you know, around some of the noise, some of the lights, and things of that nature. And I'm, uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Kamalo, um, what did we what did we come up with for? I guess I, I, I hate to say what was fair because you know every homeowner has their own uh, their own uh, limitations and on what they're willing to bear. But what restrictions did we come up with uh, for the other project and the hours that they had to work around and things of that nature? It's working. So think long and hard and, and John feel free to jump in here through the chair if, if you recall I don't recall any specific conditions per se. I wonder um, if Mr. McDowell recalls. Yeah. I believe we were limited to working no later than 11 p.m. I thought that there was something like that um, and uh, you know I mean on, on the one hand I know that this is this is the main thoroughfare through town and working during during daylight hours, uh, you know, that has the inconvenience and we're inconveniencing many, many people as opposed to uh, one or two residents here and there. And for the most part, this is a commercial area, but we do have to recognize the fact that there are residences there and, you know, there are even residences that will be affected by the noise that are just through a couple of, uh, you know, trees here and there and over on, uh, on Elm Street. So I think, that, I think that we need to look at what hours we're willing to consider this work being done and uh, try, to, try to work with the contractor to really balance everything out. And, uh, you know, I mean, if, if the homeowners and, and uh, people in the area were to tell me that they don't have any problem and they'd much rather just have it done at night, so that they don't have traffic backed up in, uh, in front of their houses all day. I'm willing to accept that, but at the same time, I don't want to just uh, mandate, mandate that the work's going to be done until 3.30 in the morning, which I think is kind of extreme uh, when you have homes in the area. Okay, Mr. Tedstone, anything else? Uh, no, I actually support this. Uh, I think it, look at it like pulling a Band-Aid, um, get it done as quickly as possible, and uh, impact the, the least amount of residents and uh, people coming through town as possible. To, to think that at uh, 730 you're going to have a detail cop get out there and put some cones out there, set up their milling operation, and, uh, and, and start, get done at 3, uh, you're looking at a, a, a much larger expense because you're going to carry it over for a few more days. The detail cops are going to be much more expensive, and it's going uh, to impact the homeowners a little bit more. So. Um, I think that there. Uh, I think that it's a, a good idea to just kind of uh, zip through it as quick as possible. I wouldn't put any restrictions on the hours, uh, with the exception of what the hours are proposed, and try to get done as much as uh, much of the heavy lifting as you can as quick as possible. The lines aren't going to keep anybody up. Uh, the paving is minimal. Uh, you, hit, you know, it's dump trucks. But in that, I agree. I agree with that. In that neighborhood, there are uh, dump trucks rolling through all night long. So um, that's just my thoughts. 
So the action item requests that this would take, or it says it could take place sometime in mid-May or early June. I mean, we're on May 17th now, so here's mid-May. Uh, are we looking at early June more than mid-May at this point? Well, we're actually hoping to start the week of June 6th, and we'd obviously be working with the police department, the fire, and, and, um, and, pub and public works, but we're, we're anticipating actually milling the week of, of June 6th if we get permission to do this work. So, it, so may strip, it may not start till the following week, but we're, we're trying to get the work done as quickly as possible. Um, so the, the traffic in Hopkinton from June 21st or whatever it is the last day of school is until August 31st drops dramatically. I mean, it gets very quiet around here in those two months when the kids are out of school and people take off and do their thing. Is it possible to delay this a couple of weeks to get to a point where we're in a much lighter traffic season? I think it would make your life easier, and I think it would make the residents of Hopkinton's life easier, too. I think as long as it didn't go beyond June, that the impacts to the overall construction schedule would be minimal. What do you guys think of that, just kind of backing it up a little I mean, bit? One, one thing I could offer up, too, is, I mean, we, we, we do, I, I understand where the resident lives. I mean, we could do the work. We could start the work on West Main Street, for example, do the milling on West Main Street first at, like, 730 at night if you wanted to, if you wanted to start a little bit earlier. That way we'd be shifting operations over to Lumber Street, which is mostly commercial in the later portion of the night, probably 11 o'clock. So that would be less disruption to the, uh, to the resident in that particular area. So that would be a compromise. We could probably do something like that, which yeah. I think would make a lot of sense. And we could Absolutely. do the same thing with the paving and the striping. So, so he's not as impacted as much, so to speak. And doing it after school ends, is that okay as well? Or are you really chomping at the bit to do it now? Uh, I mean, the sooner the better, but if, if that's what will make the town happy, then we can, we can do that. That's just one person's thought. I don't know if the board agrees yeah, or not. But, I, but then again, doing it at night really doesn't, it doesn't the, the school traffic starts at, at 6 a.m. True. Yeah, I mean, the, the real disruption, if you want to call it that, is really the milling, which is one night, and the paving, which is one night. And again, if we could work on, if we could work on West Main Street, um, you know, we can start at that portion of the project, do that part first, and then switch over to Lumber Street for the later portion of the night. I don't think that would be too bad. I mean, we do have a contract immobilized. We want to try to get all the improvements in place. I mean, if we don't, if we if we end up shifting it to later in June, then Lumber Street's going to basically stay unimproved the way it is now for probably an extra three or four weeks when we could really finish all this work probably by that time. Okay. Mr. Chairman, sure. uh, I know that this isn't uh, a public hearing, an official public hearing, but uh, could we get any input from abutters and uh, people in the neighborhood? So we didn't notify abutters about this because it's not a public hearing, but if there's those that are here that want to speak for a minute or two, I think that would be a reasonable thing to do. Uh, everybody okay with that? Yes. It's not, not a public hearing itself. So do we have anybody that wants to speak to this for a minute or two? Yes, I would like to, um, Chair. Absolutely. I emphasize a minute or two, but please go right ahead. Hi, my name is Clifford Kistner. I live at 86 West Main Street, Hopkinton, Mass. Um, I'm, I'm in agreement with Brendan about, about how to pull the Band-Aid off and get it done. Um, my daughter is, um, is doing very well at school, and she studies very, very hard to, to make those grades. Um, so your suggestion about putting an offer a, a week or, or two until the school was out was is a great suggestion. I also um, I, 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 I direct my uh, 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 point towards Norman because he had made a point to me. If you'd like to, you want to share, Mr. Kamal? Yeah. In 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 speaking with the proponent, uh, there could be consideration given to uh, the homeowner. I think we have a single homeowner. Uh, in terms of providing alternative accommodation for those two or three nights. So you're saying that that's a discussion you two have had? Have you had that discussion with the, with the developer? I just had the discussion separately with the homeowner and the proponent. And how did that go? I think they are willing to have that conversation. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> now, if I, if I may continue, um, I noticed... Um, and it's, this is because we're, we're doing something that is, that is um, extremely um, big in my eyes as, in the, to the intersection. Um, the sidewalk that holds the light pillar that is outside my stone wall, um, the, 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 pavement, the, the sidewalk is collapsing. In the, and the, the understructure of the 
carrying uh, um, for the post is looks like it's ready to have a problem. So I don't know if anybody's been out there to look at that. Um, and I, I, I noticed it um, just of recently, so I haven't been able to bring it to anyone's attention. But now in light of this being done, I'm wondering if, if that can be looked at at the same time and be resolved. If you're going to do it, why not do it all at once? Because there's no sense in going back at it. That's, that's, one of, that, that's my biggest concern of that. The only other thing that I have is that my daughter um, have, you know, adequate sleep for school. That's, that's how I feel. Uh, okay. So, Mr. Kamalo, if you could follow up on those two items, please, in terms of perhaps additional or different com accommodations for a couple of nights uh, for that particular family and see if the uh, applicant would uh, agree to that. Also, uh, specific to the light post he's talking about and the foundation work there, I assume that's a DPW issue that we should look into. Is that true? Mm -hmm. So yes, we'll, we'll look into the two issues. Can you take that yep. action item, please? Okay. Any other thoughts on the work proposed and our role here to approve them taking the action at the intersection? It's going to take Chair, a while to get his daughter to school on time from the Ritz-Carlton, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I, I, I think the appropriate thing would be to see if Mr. Kamalu has rooms at his house. Um, <laughs> however, the, a question that I do I don't have, think he does. <laughs> a, a question that I do have on this project is, will they, the, the repaving, that has no bearing on down the road when they're going to irrigate, put irrigation over to the median strip on West Main Street, right? So we're, we're not going to pave this up and then, and then, I mean, we're not going to pave it and then tear it up to put irrigation anywhere, right? This. Excellent question. Mr. Kamalo, are you aware of any impa impacts this might have on the irrigation that's going to go on further down the road on West Main? I don't believe so, but I'll let John Westerling off. Yes. So, through the chair, this will have no impact that it's outside the boundaries. As a matter of fact, we worked with the police department and the fire department to assure that this work didn't occur at the same time the work was occurring in the gateway. They are separate projects, but we want to make sure that the traffic isn't doubly impacted by the two projects. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, so does anyone make, want to make a motion specific to this action item? I do not, because I do not know how to word it. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> That's fair. But so I guess where, where did we kind of land? And I know that I could make a motion either way, but did yeah, we land with this being after school gets out? Uh, and, you know, I mean, given given the at least the acceptance of, of the one homeowner that's directly uh, in a butter. Um, I, can accept, I can accept going at night, um, but I'm still trying to figure out, are we now or are we after school gets out? That would be at the board's discretion. If we want to push it out a little bit, we can push it out. May I? Well, I'm very grateful to the accommodations that are being offered by the developer, both, both push it down a bit to allow not a disruption of the school student and to accommodate the hours of operation around um, the home. I don't know, do we condition So we would that? put those in as conditions to the approval, sure. I, I that's would. what, um, if you have specific things you want in the motion for approval, that's what we should put out there right now for discussion. And so, so that's why I'm looking for that. I would make a motion to approve the nighttime um, paving work on West Main Street con um, contingent upon or with the condition that the applicant um, coordinate hours of operation and uh, with the homeowner at Mr. Kistner, at sure, whatever yeah. at address he has, um, and that the work be done after the close of school. The end of the school year. Right, which I think well, is okay. One second, please. Let, let me get through this, okay? okay? So you have a motion on the table to push this out to after school closure. The school's closed for the year, so the work will begin sort of second half of June. Okay. And, and hours of operation. That the hours of operation would be coordinated with Mr. Kistner. Correct. Okay, as they direct the butter uh, on that piece of property for that and that road. Uh, and that accommodations be considered for the Kistner family while the work is being done. Is that your motion? Uh, accommodation? What are we a talking hotel. about? A hotel. Oh, I, I missed that. Completely. You missed, okay. 
But, but that, if I may do it, that, that, was, that was what the, the, the discussion was if they were going to do it during the school year, yeah. which give them the accommodations. Oh, I thought. I got you. So if we push it out, then we if don't we need. Push it out, then, then it's not, not needed. I got you. Okay. So yeah. that was. Mm -hmm. the, yeah. No. I, I, and I understand that. Well, and and I guess I'm going to second this if nobody else has, just so that we can Thank have you. discussion. Yeah. Um, and I understand Mr. Catino's point, and and at some level I agree, but at the same time. Milling till three thirty in the morning in my neighborhood would really set me off, and uh, set off and, a few people. And in this case, we're lucky enough that it seems as though there's there's one house that's uh, impacted in a major way, and I think that it's still reasonable to have that consideration in the in the acceptance. This is right. So there is an accommodation for the family included in the motion. That's what it's your suggested. motion. It's your motion. Only if it's that motion would only I mean that accommodations would only be considered if it's impacts his daughter's sleep prior to school. If this is being held off until after school's over, those accommodations are off the table. All right, so we have a motion on the table in a second, and we're in the discussion phase of it. Uh, I think the motion's starting to change a little bit here. So when that happens, we have to like, call it two things, one of two things: either make an amendment to the motion which really is not the best idea, or you have a friendly amendment, which means you filter information into the motion, and then the person that, second, the person that made it and the person that seconded it agree to that sort of information that's getting filtered in, because um, then it can get very cumbersome and drag on for quite some time. So let's review the motion. Mrs. Wright, what is your motion again? As you My motion did not include hotel accommodations. Okay. My motion so included in acceptance of the repaving with a provision that um, the hours of operation be coordinated with the abutter, Mr. Kistner, and that the work not take place until after the close of the school year. Okay. Perfect. And we have a second to that motion, correct? Correct. Okay. Any other discussion? We'll, we're not going to close it yet, but any other discussion based on that information? Yes, sir. You want to comment something on something? I, I, it was my understanding that the school is, ends on June 17th, so we would want, we, that would be fine with us to start the following week. That's basically what I was getting at. It pushes, pushes us off a couple weeks when we want it to start, but I think that would all work. I think it's going to be easier for everybody if it's yeah. after the school year. Sure. So the 17th of June, assuming there's no snow days. <laughs> Because That's a yesterday. big assumption. We haven't had winter yet. Okay. I just want to add, um, I've never seen hotel accommodations in, in, a, in a condition before, but that being said, um, I can't imagine any kid is going to really sleep well and do well in their exams the next day in a hotel room that's not their home. So I, I just think that if we can just avoid the family disruption during that critical time, that's the most practical way to go all around. Right, and that's in the motion by doing it at the close of the, right. after the school year closes. Okay, so we have a motion, we have a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're all set. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Right, thank you. Okay, next up, item nine on the agenda. Uh, the, the Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board will hold a joint meeting to consider appointments to, to, to fill two vacancies on the Planning Board with the term of office expiring at the 2017 annual election. So we're going to tonight have our colleagues from the Planning Board join us at the table here. And we're going to have uh, our candidates are going to sit there, uh, come up to the podium. So uh, probably if you guys sat there and sort of could watch the podium, we're going to have uh, a little bit of discussion to start out. Then we're going to get to the candidates. And then we're going to come back and we're going to have some deliberation. And then we're going to uh, appoint two new members to the planning board. So a couple of quick thoughts uh, from my perspective anyway. These two appointments will be for one year because they both go through 2017. Is that correct, Mr. Kamalo? Is that my interpretation correct? Yes, it's an, the appointment is until the next scheduled town election. And then when we elect those individuals for, in May of 2017, they'll fill that term if it has any unexpired time, correct? That is correct. Okay. So does everybody understand the general and this is for all of us. Uh, let me back up. Mr. Weissmantle, is your board in session? 
Okay, please. Okay, the planning board is in session. The board of selectmen has already been in session. Um, I think in order to run this appropriately, we've got lots of people at the table now uh, with lots of opinions. Uh, so I think in order to maintain some level of order, and we'd like to maintain some level of order, please, um, if it's okay with the planning board chair, the chair of the board of selectmen will, will chair this joint meeting. Is that okay? Do we need a vote on that, Mr. Kamalo? Yes. Yes, we do. Okay, and that would be a joint vote, correct? That is correct. So now we're all together, uh, all 12 of us, and uh, the first uh, order of business, uh, the chair would... The chair of the Board of Selectmen will entertain a motion to chair the joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so the, I will continue to chair this joint meeting. Um, Mr. Chairman? Mr. Sestari. Uh, I would like to make a motion on procedure, please. Okay. Uh, I move that the joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen and the Planning Board temporarily suspend normal voting procedures for this agenda item in favor of the following. After all introductions and interviews of candidates and after all discussion among voting board members, the joint board voting members enter into a binding open ballot process defined as follows. First, all voting members will simultaneously fill out a paper ballot indicating the voter's name and up to two choices uh, to fill the vacant planning board seats. Second, all ballots will be given to the chair of the joint meeting. Third, the chair or designee will publicly read each ballot, including the voter's name and their choices. Uh, these identified votes are then made part of the public record. Four, simultaneously with step three, uh, with, uh, with the previous step, the tally is kept. And finally, uh, the chair or designee announces the tally of the votes. Uh, the final tally will be binding, and the top two vote getters will be appointed to the vacant planning board seats for terms that will end at the conclusion of the next annual town election in May of 2017. And the reason that I'd like to see us proceed this way is that this will provide a fair process in which voting participants of the joint meeting don't feel it necessary, necessary to <coughs> race to the motion. Uh, in the past, we've had uh, more qualified candidates than seats available, and members at times will rush to make a motion for a selected candidate. And once the motion is accepted and seconded, uh, procedure forbids the board from conducting other business or considering another motion until a vote's taken or that motion is withdrawn. Uh, the, dis the process that I just described will allow for fair deliberation without concern of anyone measuring a pause in conversation and try to dash for the motion. Uh, this has been discussed with town council, and it's been determined that it satisfies open meeting law uh, and its transparency. Um, and in my opinion, it also gives all applicants a fair chance at the appointment. Mr. Sestar, you started with a motion, correct? Yes. Okay, so we have a motion on the table. Is there a second? Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. Now we'll have discussion. Mr. Weissmantle. I would agree with the motion except for one thing. Positions need to be elected by a majority of a combined board. So there's got to be a minimum of seven votes. If, if anyone gets over seven votes, if, if two people in this procedure get seven votes, I have no problem with that. But if one person does, then we drop that off and we do it one more time for, for, the, for the second spot. Because mm -hmm. I, mean, I think we need to have you know, yep. a majority. Yep. So yep. If, if that can be kind of in his next step in his motion, I have no problem with that. So we have a motion and a second. You want to make a friendly amendment to that motion, please. If you'll accept it, yeah, I will. So describe that friendly amendment as you understand it. Uh, as I understand it, um, it, this could be an iterative process, and the the appointees need to receive a minimum of seven votes uh, to to be appointed. And if they don't receive seven votes, then we'll we repeat have a second the round. With those individuals, does somebody who does someone drop off though for the well, second round, or we, we, I don't know how scattering it's going to be, or you know what, what it is. You know, so it's kind of hard to say that, but maybe at that point we would take that up, if, yeah. or, or maybe just 
if there's one, if people are voting for a person who gets one or two votes, maybe they don't vote for that person again. Right. Right. Yeah, so we can end this tonight? Uh, we do want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have a motion on the table with a friendly amendment to make sure we have a minimum of seven votes or we'll go to a second round. Are you okay with that friendly amendment? Yes. So this, the, that's all included in our motion now. Okay, so let's continue the discussion with all the planning board members and board of selectmen members. We need to understand the process first and foremost before we even get into the individuals and the, the, the election. Mr. Durso. Discussion on the process as someone who's been through this uh, and been elected, I've seen both sides of it. I, I'd like to suggest that uh, we all vote for one candidate each on the first round. The top two candidates from the first round be the ones that are, are selected because uh, I think that's fairer for uh, all parties involved with six candidates, I believe, and uh, I'd like to see it handled that way. Okay, so that's different than the motion on the table. Yes, so that's a friendly amendment to the motion, Mr. Sestari. Yeah, I don't. I don't think that. Then, then each person, you're saying each person votes for one, and then the top two of that first round get appointed. So first of all, there's going to be one person who definitely doesn't have a, ma a majority, as Mr. Weissmantle was pointing out. Um, and secondly, uh, both seats are supposed to be appointed by the, the joint board, and in effect, each person has one vote for one seat. So I think it, it counters that that mandate uh, that's I don't that that's not something that I could go for okay any other discussion mr. Testo? yeah if you could just clarify for me um, so what how I think it should go is I think the the written vote that's a good idea I think everyone should write one name get it in count it whoever's the majority then at that point that person's taken out of the pool so the next five people are left in the pool. Then we do a quick second vote. Whoever's the main vote getter there at that point, that's the second person. The way it, the way I am hearing it by Mr. Sestari is that it's almost like we're going president, vice president, and uh, on one ticket. And I, I would feel a bit more comfortable if we could do it on two, I, assuming that we can get out of here before midnight. Okay. I, I'm sorry. No, cool. Let's just take that I, suggestion to the motion. Yeah, you know, and, and, and if we do something like that, I'm fine with that, I guess. Um, but but my, my concern there is that each one of us, uh, I'm, I'm hoping by the end of the interviews, has two names in mind. And if we each write down two, then we've got a better chance of all kind of coming together on, and, and at least one of them having more than seven votes. Um, whereas if we start right out and we're only making a single vote, we have 12 people making a single vote, and to hope that one of them gets more than seven, we're starting to cut our chances down. Um, that's my only concern. You know, I mean, I, I might be thinking of voting for candidate A and B, and you might be thinking of voting for B and C, and I might vote for B the first time, and you vote for C, and then yeah. you say, damn, I was going to do that the next time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's my only concern. Uh, but well, I'm, I'm good with I, you the know, the more, the more discussion we have, the more I'm uh, leaning toward just racing for the, <laughs> racing for the motion. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we're trying to avoid racing for the motion. <laughs> we have in the motion, or we're working on. Uh, okay, we have a motion on the table and a second. Any other discussion? And I'm sorry, guys. I, when you first sat down, I didn't think we were going to be hanging out for 15 minutes before we got to the interview. So if you guys want to turn around and jump in, yeah, thank you. I, I would appreciate doing that myself. Yeah. Um, I'd like to add something, if I may. Is there a reason why, when we vote, we have to, Mr. Chair, it, um, it, is there a reason why we have to put our name to the to the vote? Uh, I think that's an open meeting law requirement that the citizens understand who we're voting for on the issues before us as elected members of the boards. Yes, I, that's my interpretation, Mr. Kamal. If you have any other thoughts on that, that's absolutely correct. Thank you. I like that. So, I don't like anonymity. Yeah, I like being able to, so we have to do that. attach right, your name. I just thought it needed to be asked. That's fair. Any other thoughts on the motion before us? I agree with Mrs. Sassari that I think with the number of candidates we have, having two votes will move the process along faster rather than have 
a situation where you don't have seven. We also have to address, just add something that if there is a tie, then it would go to it. Okay. So we have a motion on the table in a second, specific to how we're going to follow the process to appoint these two candidates. This comes from town council, by the way. Mr. Sestari obviously did some homework before coming in tonight on this issue. Uh, so I think we're in good shape there. Any other thoughts? The point about the time, if first ballot, with two candidates, more than seven, and the time, that's okay, right? Because if they're tied, if, then they would. If, yeah, they would if they tie as top voters. Yeah, if you can't determine, I mean, if the tie is a failure of emotion. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Failure to elect, failure to appoint. Well, in this case, it's a ballot, though. So it's, yes. we're achieving seven or zero. It's a ballot, but we're going to read them out. So it's like, it's like a vote. So just, just for clarity, um, are we going to treat a tie for top vote getters the same as a tie for the second vote getters the top two get more than seven and it's only two there's only two that get well, I don't think if I they tie and there's only two that what if there's a three-way tie or above seven didn't think of that did you three-way tie there could be yeah then it goes by height i just i just know that <laughs> i just know that we you know we ran into the situation with the uh, library trustees uh a few years ago and I want to make sure that we're all on board with the same. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was a failure to elect, right? That's what happened. It, it was, but none, uh, exactly. So what I'm saying is even if, if our top two vote getters both get nine votes uh, and then the, the next vote getter is five votes, I would, I would you know, my nature would say, well, they get the two spots but if we go by the process that was uh, uh, told to us by the state election committee on the board of library trustees they would say it was a failure to elect and we need to start over well we are not in fact electing these individuals Good we point. are appointing these individuals. thank you thank you that's a separate process and i think it's separate Great. mass general law specific to elections and how they're conducted. i like that i like that way of thinking because i thought the other way was a little screwed up Okay. <laughs> Any other discussion, Mr. Kamala? Yeah, you know, I want to throw that into the motion if I could, a friendly amendment to the motion, because we do have a public hearing that we need to open at 8 o'clock. Your motion said that we wouldn't do any other business until we resolve this. Uh, so the, if the motion could allow for me to open this public hearing, um, I thought I heard something like that. No? Uh, no, well, no, that was different scenario and it was in the explanation of I why you. I was okay. making okay. the motion. Okay, so with that, uh, if we could all just go on hold for one minute here. We have a public hearing at 8 p.m. this evening, uh, which is a transfer or a pledge of a license for an all alcoholic beverages packages store license application for the Foster Street Liquors doing business as Old Town Liquors. We need to open a public hearing to review the pu liquor transfer of the liquor license application from Old Town Liquors to Foster Street Liquors, doing business as Old Town Liquors. Uh, is there a motion to open the public hearing, please? Second. And a second. We have a motion and a second to open the public hearing uh, as required in the agenda at 8 p.m. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the hearing for the liquor license is open. And the chairman will continue that hearing until such time as we complete the agenda item before us at the moment. Is that appropriate, Mr. Kamala? Okay, remember, I'm still flying a little nervous here because I haven't flown in a while. Uh, okay, so we'll continue that public hearing until such time as we get back to it. Back to the issue at hand. We have a motion and a second in front of us, specific to the process we're going to follow to the elect or appoint, sorry, appoint the two planning board uh, members for the next year. That friendly amendment was off the table because it wasn't accepted by the individual that made the motion. Any others? Second point of clarification, uh, just to be clear, if there's a tie in the first two, that's fine. If there's a tie in the second two, is it the first place is nine, the second two have seven, uh, then there'll be a second vote. For the second position. The first, the first position will have won, will be appointed, sorry, 
confusing our lingo here because of yesterday. The first person will have been appointed. We will appoint the second person. The second two will go through the process again. Okay. So uh, with a little bit of risk involved in my next statement, I think this is important to do given the uh, uh, importance of what we're about to uh, get into here. Um, I'd like to open this up to the public to see if anybody, whether it be candidates or members of the public, have any thoughts or concerns or specifics they want to address regarding the process we're describing only and the motion on the table. Does anybody want to weigh in on that? Okay, so seeing none, we can continue. I just want to make sure everybody was comfortable. Okay, anything else? All those in favor of the motion on the table before us, outlining the process, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so it's unanimous, and that's the process that we will follow. Thank you, Mr. Sestari, for your input. Okay. Don't with, thank me until we get it done. Yeah. <laughs> I might retract my thank you later on. With that, uh, let's go ahead now and ask our candidates to join us. Right? Everybody okay with that? We'll ask the candidates to come up one at a time. They're printed on our agenda sheet this evening. Uh, I'm not sure in what manner they were printed on the sheet, but that's the, the order we will follow, Mr. Kistner. Mr. Chair, um, I think there's one more that is not on the list. Yes, yeah, so we'll clarify that as we get started here. Thank you. Okay. So, so just to be clear, I have on the list Al Rogers, Brian Karp, Vincent Cerulli, I hope I got that right, Ann Beauchamp, and Sandra Altamira. Who are we missing? We're missing Ritterbush and Amy Park. Ritterbush, right? Thank you, Mr. Chair. There is the pilot. That is in front of you and the all the names. So this is about following what Mr. Sestari got from town council. Okay, so Sandy Altamira. So this, so on the ballot here, okay, this is, quote, the ballot. Not really a ballot, okay, but this is the sheet we're going to use to tally, okay. Sandy Altamira, Carl Barker-Hook, Ann Beauchamp, Vincent Cirilli, Brian Karp, Amy Ritterbush, and Al Rogers, Okay. So do you want to take them in the order that's on the sheet? Everybody good with that? Everybody good with that? Okay. So with that, why don't we start with Mrs. Altamura. The process, I think, would be um, fair and equitable for all if the candidates came to the microphone, introduced themselves, gave us a brief brief background, we know a lot of these folks, a brief background on themselves, uh, offered why they're interested in serving as a member of the planning board and any other pertinent facts that they want to share. Uh, and then we'll sort of take it from there with each of the candidates. We'll have an opportunity for all of us to ask questions if we have compelling questions we want to ask. We don't have to ask a question. Um, of each of the candidates, but if you've got something that comes to mind specific to somebody, uh, we'll try to work that in. We do have some time constraints here this evening uh, with all the other stuff on our agenda. So with that, uh, if everybody's good, we shall proceed. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, thank you. Um, well, I think I know most of you. Um, Why don't we I do have... this, though, real quick? Just name and address for the folks at home that are oh, watching. Sandy Altamira, 33 Elm Street. Thank you. Um, I've been a continuous member of uh, ZAC for 24 years. I was on the Board of Appeals for six years. I was on the Planning Board for 15 years. And while I was on the Board, that included, um, that was part of the Board that worked on the Osmood and permitting of legacy farms. Um, I was in the, I was a member of the Voices for Vision. I worked on the update of the Master Plan. Um, I've helped co-sponsor a number of town bylaws. I've been a member of the Democratic Town Committee forever. And uh, presently, I'm chair of the Commissioner of Trust Funds. So I've participated in town. The 15 years on the planning board, I loved it. I, I really enjoyed my time on the board. And when I heard that there was going to be, of course, two new members on the board, and then there's two open spots, I know that um, there's an awful lot of work that's being done on legacy farms. 
well, I was there from the beginning with Legacy Farms and worked with Roy and, and his team. And um, I was part of the, the Osmood and got the wording for that. And so I think if you're looking for somebody who can jump right in, um, I think I could probably get up to speed faster than anyone else. Um, I think that uh, I, I don't know if I would rerun next May. I might. But um, I think that the board has got a lot in front of it, and they're going to need people who can get up to speed fast. And, and any of you who have been on the planning board, and a lot of you have, knows that there's a, a substantial learning curve. But you don't just jump in and have it all under your belt. I mean, I, the hours I used to spend on Sunday with the engineering reports and site walks. And I have walked all of Legacy Farms, and I know there's other things on the agenda besides that, but I know that there's a big push right now, and I feel that I should uh, I, I could probably step in and, um, and help out the board quickly. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Sandy. Does anyone have any questions for Mrs. Altamira? I have, oh, go ahead, Frank. I have a quick one. Um, you said that you, you don't know if you'd want to uh, run what would be something that would make you want to stay or not want to stay? I don't think there's any one thing that would make me stay or want to stay. Like I said, the, I think the planning board is the most intense in board in town. I think it also has the greatest impact. I've always felt like that. Um, but the Sunday afternoons with the engineering reports, the site walks, uh, years ago, every committee in town had to have at least one planning board member on it. So everybody was on three or four committees. It's a very intensive board, and it's a five-year commitment. So I did it for 15 years. I would be happy to do it for one more, and then I would reassess. So I don't want to commit and say, yes, I'm going to do it. I might do it. Okay. Mr. Durso. Uh, can you tell Sandy, can you tell us about your uh, experience working on the master plan? Oh, that was a while ago. Uh, we met, gee, I guess two or three um, times a month, and we all took different portions of it. And um, it, it, I really don't know. The context of my question is we're in the middle of the process of doing the new version of it. Mm -hmm. No, we did a lot of um, visioning at that time, too, and we set out a lot of uh, um, surveys because we wanted to, as we were crafting this, as we, was, we were making an overall plan, we wanted to make sure that we were in sync with the town. I mean, we're here to represent the town. It's not just us and what we want. People elect us, so we need to know how they feel on different subjects, and I found that one of the most interesting <coughs> components of it. Any other questions for Mrs. Altamira? Okay, Sandy, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Next, we have Mr. Carl Barker Hook. Um, hi. First of all, to eliminate confusion, call me Ted. Carl is the official birth certificate name, but people know me as Ted. Ted, um, could you give us your name and address, Sure, I please? absolutely will. I am Ted Barker Hook. I live at 75 Grove Street, right here in the center of town. I've been there for close to 18 years now. Um, in preparing for tonight, I, I put together a letter. I was misinformed, and I only made seven copies of the letter, thinking that it was going to be the Board of Selectmen, Mr. Kamalo. Uh, but I would love to share it with you, uh, if you want to share, pass it around. Um, I apologize I didn't have more copies. Um, I don't have anywhere near Sandy's experience. I'm kind of new to the town, uh, new to the town's discussions. Um, living in the center of town, I've seen a lot of changes recently, obviously Legacy Farms, um, our efforts to improve downtown. Um, I've seen a lot of development in the center of town, um, uh, folks coming in wanting to build houses, wanting to build subdivisions in town. Um, I've seen the traffic impact on the center of town. And for this reason, I've become increasingly involved. I served the last term on the Zoning Advisory Committee under uh, Mr. Catino. I found it a really fascinating experience. I learned a lot of new things. Um, like Sandy, um, my hesitation to get involved in the planning board early, well, similar to Sandy, is the five-year commitment is daunting. And I've not been a part of the planning board. And I've heard what the planning board entails in a five-year commitment. I'm not the kind of guy that likes to quit. I didn't want to get into a five-year commitment and then realize, oh my gosh, I can't get my real job that pays the bills done. 
I can't see my kids do this, I can't see my kids do that. Um, and so this one-year opportunity, I thought, was a perfect time for me to try to increase my involvement in town committee. Uh, I think that I bring two things. Uh, I think I am a new voice um, for town government. Um, maybe my weakness compared to Sandy's experience is also in a way a strength, being a voice that hasn't been heard. I also live in the center of town. And if my bit of research was correct, I think that if I were appointed to the planning board, I think I'd be the only member that lives in the center of town, which is so profoundly affected by so much that's going on in town. With Ms. Wright stepping down, we've lost that between Hayden Row and Grove Street voice on the board. Um, and with a couple other gentlemen stepping aside, um, I worry a little bit that we won't have that town perspective in some really important decisions. Whether you consider me or another candidate who also lives in the center of town, I feel like that's a very important voice to have on such a crucial board. Great. Thank you for that input. Uh, any questions for Mr. Barker Hook? Mr. Chairman, Please. Talk a little bit about your experience in that. Sure. I, uh, I joined this year. Um, and I was frankly kind of quiet at first while I tried to learn the rules and how it worked. Um, and as it went through, I think Mr. Catino would, would agree, I, I became more involved. I asked more questions. I was more ready to offer uh, my suggestions. Um, the two things I most got out of it are how what in the first meeting looked like two groups that could be a warring, difficult group um, found, plenty <laughs> found plenty of places to find compromise and agreement. Um, the other thing I got out of it is how much more there is to every issue that we outside of these committees, as I was before, didn't realize. How many different aspects and facets and points of view need to be considered as we work through these issues. And those were the two biggest things I got out. Any other questions for Mr. Barker Hook? Mr. Durso. Mr. Barker Hook, were you, weren't you also on the Voices for Visions Committee uh, or a seminar that you had? I, I don't you think I was. No. You really enjoyed it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Kistner. Um, if you, with this app, if you were to have the opportunity to do it again, would you do it again? Oh, absolutely. Whether I get appointed to this position or not, um, I would very much be interested in, in doing another term with Zach. Absolutely. Any other questions? Okay, Ted, thank you very much thank for coming you. tonight. Ann Beauchamp. Ann, am I getting your last name right? Yes, you Beauchamp. are. Beauchamp. I'm impressed. Thank you. Um, I'm Ann Beauchamp, Six Angels Way. And um, it was suggested to me to apply for this position, uh, which I was honored to get the suggestion. Um, and it took me a while to even um, come to the conclusion that I should apply. Because uh, I recognize the importance of the work that the planning board does. Um, and that is similar to how I um, approach all decision making. I like to weigh what I already know, do a lot of learning, which as Sandy pointed out, I would have to do on the planning board. But I am um, a quick learner, a studious learner. And um, I think that the major strength that I would bring to the planning board um, is that, as you can see um, in the short um, description that I wrote, my work is to write surveys and gather information from people, which may not seem like a big deal, but for me, it matches my values in that I think that every member of the community, even the quiet ones and the loud ones, um, every member of the community needs the opportunity to um, be represented and to be considered. Um, I think that that's a huge undertaking, um, and it's very challenging to consider other people's point of views, and that's something that I think um, I take seriously, to pull in the other point of views um, and understand um, different members of the community have different ideas of where Hopkinton is going. And I think it's very important that the planning board um, is able to understand those views and try to shape the bylaws and the master plan in a way that um, protects our future re residents and respects um, Hopkinton's past. So um, although I, I definitely don't have the um, experience 
um, that Sandy does or that um, many of the planning board members already do. I can um, bring a strong work ethic, quick learner, um, and just a real desire to represent everyone, even people who disagree with me um, personally, to represent everybody and try to um, try to come to fair decisions and um, and reflect those in the master plan and in the written bylaws clearly so they can be applied evenly. Great. Thank you very much. Any questions for Ann, please? Mr. Kistner. Would you consider continuing on after, your, after one of the uh, I um, applied because it was told to me that people thought that I could contribute to the planning board, and that is genuinely the bar that I would um, hold. If I think that I'm contributing, and if I don't see other people who might um, be able to contribute more or more effectively, uh, then I would consider continuing. Um, but if I see other people um, interested in a spot that I think would do um, a more efficient um, and stronger job than I would, then I would uh, step aside. That's really honestly the, the bar for me. I want to be able to contribute and not just take a seat. Any other questions? Mr. Durso. Um, can you explain uh, what you feel is your strongest uh, ability to bring to the board? <clears throat> I do think that I have um, the ability to deeply consider an issue from a variety of angles, deeply consider the laws that are in place, the bylaws, the master plan and the needs of the community and engineering reports and um, I have a strong ability to find ways to net those issues together into some way that works um, and kind of on the same page in a group um, setting I can listen to a variety of opinions and see how we um, what points of view we share and what we can build on instead of um, where we disagree other questions? And thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Vincent Cerulli. Did I pronounce your last name right? Yeah, actually, I'm surprised. It's pretty rare. Hi, I'm Vincent Cerulli. Him, yeah. Thank you for the opportunity tonight to talk to you. I live at 24 Chamberlain Street. Been here 18 years. We moved here, my wife and I. We had one child at the time. Uh, we, told, we were told the town was a nice little town with an up-and-coming school system, and it's never disappointed us. Um, soon after my daughter came along, and with all the family activities and the constraints of a full-time job, it was difficult to think of anything more than just, if I could get through the Sunday paper by Thursday, I felt I had a pretty productive week, to be honest. <laughs> Fast forward a little, a little bit. Uh, my son graduated from college a year ago. He's now an electrical engineer. He's out of the house, has a full-time job in his field. My daughter will soon be a sophomore at Hopkins and High. As I thought about why I was coming here tonight, the answer really came very quickly. I'm here to say thanks. This town's done a lot for us. We didn't raise our kids in a bubble. And most of the decisions that were made were made right here in these rooms. And I want the opportunity to do that as well. I think I can get along with, with anyone because that's how I've been my whole life. And I believe I have uh, quite a bit of, of to give, time, effort, energy. And I've read the vision statement. I've read the master plan. They both align with my values and my beliefs. And at the end of the day, I think I could do a very good job on, with the opportunity. Um, this town has done quite a bit, as I said, for us. And this is my opportunity to give back. Civic involvement's always been a part of every town. And this is no different. If I can get on a board and I can help make decisions that help someone who's just moving to town now that's in the same situation that my wife and I were in 18 years ago, that would be the thanks that I want, would want. That would be it for me. That's my great why I'm here. Thank you. Questions, please. Mr. Kistner. Same question I posed to the other um, candidate. candidates. Um, would you consider going on after your first year? I would. I, I would consider that, provided they would have me. I ask a lot of questions, as you'll know, as you will find out. <laughs> That's what I think is my strong suit. I ask questions which provoke thought. It's not always because I want to hear the answer. It's because I want to hear the opposing views, and I want to know that every decision has been looked at from every angle. You're welcome. Any other questions? 
Mr. Durso. What are the committees that you served on? This would be the only one. I've never been involved before with politics. I've always been an armchair politician like most people. Are there civic uh, committees, I thought? No. What are your views on, on, on the growth uh, of the town? Because there's, there, there, that's, that's, uh, I think saying that we have opposite sides, and, and you know, how, how, what's your outlook? I think the town needs to find a little more equilibrium. I think we have added quite a few residential houses. I don't think we have the business end to help that. My vision of a town, I grew up in Melrose. I don't know if any of you are familiar with Melrose. Melrose has a very nice little quaint downtown. In 1978, when the blizzard hit, I worked at a hardware store downtown, and I watched people drag sleds with children down the street, and it looked like something out of a Norman Rockwell painting. And I was 16 years old, and I thought it was the coolest thing on earth. Downtown of every town is the heart. That's where you want people to congregate. That's where you want people to go. When I was a kid, I played baseball. We went to the skate and ski shop. I got my birthday cakes at the Sugar and Spice Bakery. We didn't go to another town for anything unless you wanted to go for something unusual. And that's what I want to see Hopkinton do. That's where people meet. That's where they make friends. That's where they stay friends. And that's, that's the heart of every town to me. And that's what I want to help do. Other questions? OK, thank you very much. Next up, Brian Karp. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You did get my name right. Thank you. <laughs> I think I got the rest down. Unless I screw up Carp, Rogers 23 somehow. Nicholas Road. Um, so I have, for the past five years, served on the planning board and, and enjoyed the five years that I've served. I didn't seek re-election. Re as many of uh, the fellow planning board members know, um, because at the time when I decided to not seek re-election, I thought we were going to be able to get through the site plan review of Legacy Farms. When I realized it wasn't going to happen is when I decided I needed to get back on the planning board, because it's something that has gone unfulfilled, and who better to see that through than someone who's gone through it. Um, one of the other things uh, that I like about that I that I've enjoyed about the planning board is all the all the various discussions. Um, recently, you know, we just went through. Um, well, sorry, I'm going to just skip to one more one other topic. I just saw the lane. We just went through the master plan revision, uh, an update to the master plan. It's another thing that I've enjoyed, I enjoyed working on. Um, when I ran for planning board five years ago, there were two things that, that, want, that I was interested in, and that was to see uh, legacy farms through and to work on downtown revitalization. So we got through the southerly side of legacy farms. Um, and there were a lot of lessons to be learned from that. And I would love to be able to take the lessons learned, having sat through the entire site plan review of Legacy Farms, and make sure that the northerly side doesn't have the same missed opportunities and the same issues that we went through on the southerly side. The other thing that uh, I ran on was downtown re revitalization. And since, my since during my five-year term on planning board, uh, we've seen a lot of new uh, businesses come downtown, new restaurants. Um, but now we have a new opening. Don't know what's going to happen, but hopefully, you know, there can be an updated revitalization for the downtown, and I'd like to be a part of that. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Carp? Dave. Okay, Paul. Mr. Carp. You mentioned that um, lessons learned from Legacy South versus Legacy North. Is there anything particular that you would like to see done differently? You ask any of the residents on Curtis Road about the opportunities that were missed. Um, what, they, what they had to endure, the noise, the dust, um, you know, things like that, you know, I wouldn't wish on anyone in town. And, and I apologize to them profusely because we didn't do our job. I want to make sure that something like that doesn't happen. I want to make sure there's no clear cutting. I want to make sure that the site plan is, is um, followed through in an organized and orderly manner. 
Uh, yes. Mr. Carp, can you explain uh, to the new members and the board of selectmen what your role has been on the planning board? Uh, well, my first year was my quiet year because I was getting caught up, something I no longer need to do. This past year, I've worked, all my, I've worked my way up to vice chairman on the planning board. Any other questions? I have a question for Mr. Carp. Um, so I, I appreciate what you're saying as far as that you want to see this process through. If in one year this has not been completed, do you plan on running again for an additional five? If it's not through, I absolutely will. And I'll if it whatever is? Whatever it takes, because I want to see it done, and I want to see it done right. And if it is done, is that it? If it is done, I will not say that that's it. Um, I would always leave that door open. It, I, I was ready for it to be done. I wanted other people to have the opportunity to step up and, and give back to the town, as I did. Um, but I can't say, just because of how much I've enjoyed working on planning board, I can't say that if it is done, is that it? I don't know. We'd have to see. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Kistner. Only time will tell. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, thank you very much. Next up is Amy Ritterbush. Amy here or is she down the hall? I was, I saw her dart there out. she is. Okay. Amy's also attending another meeting this evening. Amy, welcome. Hi, so my name is Amy Ritterbush. I live at 54 Grove Street. Um, I was not originally planning to apply for the planning board. Um, you know, I've been very happy, been on the Historic District Commission, and, um, and I just got appointed to the Design Review Board, which is where I've been tonight, which I really is a good fit for me. Um, but when I found out with all, about all the openings on the planning board, I thought it would be really important to have someone who has followed the issues and is experienced. And I, I really do follow the planning and zoning issues very closely. I get all the agendas by email, and I um, let's, and I get the, read the newspaper every day. Um, so I think I could come up to speed pretty quickly, although I know it's, it it's a, will be a learning curve for sure. And I also have done a lot of research on um, zoning and planning issues to prepare for the Educate Happy to Know Your Vote show every year. So let's see. I'm interested in the master plan refresh that I understand is they've done some work, but it's ongoing because I have a strength in communication, and I know you, know, you want to make sure this is communicated out to the town, but you get feedback from a variety of groups of people. Um, so that everybody's thoughts can be incorporated before the master plan is revoted. Um, I also, like Mr. Barkerhook, I live in the center of town, and I do think it's a loss with Claire. Um, I mean, it's great for Claire to be on the selectman, but it's a loss for the planning board to not have someone downtown anymore. So I, I think that's a value. So um, I have a bachelor's degree in art history, which is not really re particularly relevant to the planning board, but and I work for the Wellesley Public School District in the technology office. Um, I'm, so I'm currently in the historic... District Commission and the Design Review Board, and I've been on some of the school councils in the past. I recently attended a really interesting workshop in the, at the Cobman Estate in Lincoln, Lincoln about leading locally and preservation management strategies, which I think will help with the, both Design Review Board and Historic District Commission, and I think a plan board if appointed. So I think, I think that's about it. I, mean, I do a lot of volunteering in town with Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and then Educate Hopkinton, too. Great. Thank you. Mr. Kistner. Um, with all the things that I think I can make it work. It's two two Monday evenings a week about, and I think I think I can fit that in. My oldest son is um, is 16, and he has his permit, and he'll be driving in the fall, so I can rely on him to get himself to his activities. You and, can and relax his, now that he's and his places. little brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. So, but I think I can make it work. Any other questions? Amy, I believe in karma, and um, last week during the debate. Had you asked me harder questions, I would grill you right now. <laughs> but I feel that you were rather kind to me. So. Oh. <laughs> My question to you is, what's your favorite color? <laughs> As an art major. Purple. Perfect. My daughter's favorite. Okay. Any other compelling questions? Um, Mr. Any Durso. Uh, what would be your strongest uh, ability to ask? <laughs> um, 
Well, I think being a resident of the downtown is really helpful. Um, you know, I walk around downtown and I take pictures for Educate Hopkinton. So when there's a new ar news article about, um, you know, development going on, I walk around and I look at it and get pictures. Um, so I think one of my greatest strengths is that I follow, I follow the news and I'm fairly up to speed, although I don't actually attend planning board meetings in person, but I would, would obviously. Okay, Mr. Kistner. Well, it was leading locally. It was um, historic management, or sorry, preservation management strategies for historic districts. Yeah, but you mentioned something about um, technologies. Oh yeah, I'm the webmaster for the Wellesley Public Schools, and I also help with their social media, and I do a lot of social media for um, other for freelance web design clients. Do you think that you could bring something to the board in the way of, of getting voters to be more interactive? I hope so, and I try to do that already with Educate Hopkinton. We've found that um, people pay attention to the issues more if there's a good photo that des you know, describes the problem that's going on. So I, I do make it a point to drive around and um, get photos of developments. Because so I think that if you share the photo with the agenda item, you know, then people... Mm -hmm. um, to, and this is in my opinion. Um, today's technology is, is ever growing, and it's um, becoming more and more... Um, ingrained in everything that we do. And there are a lot of people that don't come, come out to vote and come to town meeting uh, because they have two, two parents working or they have um, time constraints that once they're working at home with their children and want to spend th their time with them. Um, and ultimately, I think that, that us as a board has to have to, have to find a way to get more interactive with the external aspect of, of just being inside the building and, and getting more people involved that you can't make it to town meetings and, and stuff like that. So do you have any idea of how maybe that could be facilitated and, and what could be some sort of result of that? Yeah, I mean, I think, so Elaine does a great job. She posts all the documents online so people who are interested in it can look for them. Uh, but not everybody knows that they're there, or that they can click all the links to get all the plans and documents. But I, I think that that does need to be publicized more. And I, I guess I don't know of another town that has like their own planning board Facebook page or anything like that. But so I don't know if any if the towns are open to that or not. The town does have a Facebook page, um, but within the constraints that the town would allow, I think it is great to post more photos on the website and at, at you know on Facebook and Twitter and other social media so that people. People can't go to everything. Like people do have busy lives, but um, at least if they know what it is, they can make the choice. You know, the choice that if I really need to come to this meeting because this is near me, or this is, you know, I hate this thing, or I really love this thing. But they don't ever come when they love that thing, right? They come when they hate it. <laughs> right. Any other questions? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> okay. Next up, last but not least, Mr. Al Rogers. Good evening, uh, Al Rogers, uh, for Laurel Laf. Um, so um, I uh, built my house in Hopkinton uh, 32 years ago, and I've lived in the area my whole life. Uh, I raised my family in town. My son still lives in town with his family, and my grandchildren uh, will be attending Hopkinton schools. My grandson's starting kindergarten this fall. So we're very excited about that. Um, I've helped out uh, with Cub Scouts. I've coached um, and served on Little League and Babe Ruth boards. Um, I served on the Parks and Recreation Commission for seven years, and most of those years I was the chairman. Uh, I served on the Fruit Street uh, Search and Developmental Committees and uh, contributed to the development of the master plan for that property. Uh, I'm now serving on the Marathon Committee for the past 12 years uh, and CPC for the last seven. Um, I spent most of my working life, 40 years, in uh, facilities management and uh, in the construction business. And 24 of those, I own my own business. Um, my work experience, I think, would be a great asset to the planning board. Um, my knowledge of um, building codes and zoning laws. Um, you know, that being said, um, you know, I have a lot to learn, and um, I would look forward to that opportunity. Um, 
I would do something to improve uh, the traffic situation in town, um, but um, um, I don't have an agenda. I would uh, keep an open mind and consider all sides of the issues brought before the planning board. Um, I do believe in landowners' rights and would try to balance those with uh, potential problems uh, to the town and the butters. Uh, and I think uh, I would bring a f um, some fresh views and ideas to the board. Great, thank you. Questions for Mr. Rogers, please. Any questions? Mr. Durso. <laughs> well, we are working on that. Um, Any other questions, please? Okay, thank you very much. So, with that, we've heard from all seven of our candidates. Uh, I don't know about you folks, but all seven of our candidates have made this job extremely difficult uh, to decide amongst them. Uh, all seven, from my perspective anyway, as one individual, uh, are, are exactly why Hopkinton, believe it or not, works so well. Uh, we do work well as a community, and uh, the folks that we just heard from are great uh, testaments to that, and that they have great passion for Hopkinton, and uh, great experiences from different angles and perspectives, but great experience, all of which I think would do a great job. So it is a difficult uh, task we have before us now. Uh, typically, what is done when we're appointing people uh, we will hear from the candidates. They'll do something similar to that uh, for any other appointment that we make in town. And then uh, we have some discussion amongst the board a little bit. Uh, and then we would get into the motion process of who we're going to appoint. Now, we've already covered that with the uh, procedure that Mr. Uh, Sestari put forward earlier and that we all agreed to and voted on. Uh, what we didn't talk about, though, as part of that was sort of the deliberation piece of this. I don't see that that necessarily needs to change unless there was something material in your motion that we didn't discuss. No, nope. I just said that we do that process after we meet the candidates and have discussion among the board. Okay. So everybody's still on the same page in terms of the process, right? So now I think we kind of move into the uh, discussion phase. We've got seven great candidates, and I think uh, maybe to sort of break the ice is we'll just start uh, and go around the room a little bit. Maybe we'll start with our colleagues on the planning board first, and then uh, we'll just kind of go this way, and then we'll see where the discussion takes us. I just want to say real quick to the public hearing folks for 8 o'clock, I apologize for this over uh, extension of this time slot. I, we had 20 minutes for it. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why we set 20 minutes up for this, what could be hour or two hour you know, process. I apologize for that, uh, but we'll get to you as soon as we can. Okay, so with that, Mr. Weissman, why don't you start if you want to open up sort of the deliberation piece of this. After your comments, that, that we were very fortunate to get seven folks to, to go for here. And, uh, you know, I don't think we'll go too terribly wrong to whoever we pick, per se. Uh, I guess this person who works with uh, Brian Carp, I will have second his endorsement as somebody that's usually supporting us uh, on the planning board uh, kicks me when I start going somewhere a little bit wrong. So, you know, that's personal experience. I know most of the other folks do. So, and I, I think those particularly that have served on Zach and the front with our group have a meeting with that. So. Okay. Mr. Ferrari. Uh, we are very lucky to have seven candidates who don't know enough to run the other way. <laughs> uh, that being said, uh, it's a great experience, and, and my leaning in, um, as we get to uh, naming our choices on the, on the piece of paper, are those who do have experience. We have, we're very lucky to have two new members of the board who are new members of the board. And my leaning now is to pick people with more experience in town background uh, rather than having four of the nine being brand new folks. I would encourage that those who don't make it strongly consider uh, running next year uh, for a five-year term 
but for filling this one year period, my leaning is to go with uh, people who have experience, who can get up to speed quickly uh, and help our two new members get up to speed quickly too. Thank you. Uh, I mean, there's going to be some uh, learning curve regardless of who comes in here, especially with Lance and North and, and, and those issues. Uh, but I think from the candidates, a uh, couple minutes after the podium, you've got a pretty good idea in terms of their qualifications, their strengths, and weaknesses. So I feel pretty good about where we're at as a group to be able to you know, identify and go ahead and go with a uh, uh, good idea of uh, their backgrounds. Thank you. I'd like to echo those comments that uh, these gentlemen have already stated. Uh, very qualified uh, candidates here. Um, I am happy that they look at this as a good opportunity to give back to the town and you know give them a personal sense of uh, you know commitment and uh, putting skin in the game. Um, I agree that uh, with Brian, uh, there is an advantage. Uh, endorsing him, uh, he's been through all of the the, uh, the meetings. Uh, he's been through the site plan. He's walked the site. Getting us over the hump at Legacy Farms, I think, is a top priority. So uh, uh, I would just like to say that he had my endorsement. Mr. Kistner, um, I too side with what has been said so far. Um, the, the compelling aspect of my position is that I'm new to the board, and I have quite a bit to learn. Um, I hope to follow in the footsteps of my people that have left and gone to higher position. Um, and that being said, um, with the background, I too would side with John in regards to the the amount of um, experience that people have for the one year that we need to move forward, we need experience. And with that experience, um, there'll be time to contemplate whether the, or deliberate whether or not they want to continue on after being voted in for the, for the remainder time. So I look forward to getting that experience on the board because we are a little slight handed with the two of us, myself and David, um, coming in with the, the knowledge that we have. Um, so uh, we want a strong board, we want unity, we want transparency, and we want um, all the boards across the Hopkinton um, um, judicial aspects to pull together and to be running like um, the New England Patriots, stepping up and, and being together. And if, if that if that is what we can culminate into, then I don't see any failure at all in anything that we are about to do. And that's my opinion. Great. Thank you. David. I'm going to go a slightly different direction, saying agreeing with you that all seven candidates could, I think, could do a great job on the planning board. And to me, if we pick two with much experience and or two with very little experience, I think that would be fine. I think a nine-member board, four new people, would be a good complement to five people that are experienced. Um, so I'm, I'm going to have a hard decision. It's like you said, all seven are legitimate. Um, I may go one of each, one experienced and one inexperienced in the new board. OK. First of all, uh, I want to welcome our new members here. This is our first meeting, um, Flip and David. And, um, Brendan, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Claire. I'm so ho honored to uh, have worked with you, Claire, and I'm so proud to see you there. Thank you. When I was first appointed, uh, Claire was one of the people that spoke in my favor, and I always remember that and appreciate that. Um, Brian was the first person to shake my hand. Uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, I want to speak in favor of, uh, I want to thank Anne for Champ for running. Uh, she's uh, one of the people I've been talking to about running. Uh, being on the planning board. Um, but I want to support uh, Brian Carp for his experience and Sandy Altamura for her experience that they can hit the ground running. I, I, we have two new members, it's the first 24 hours each. 
And I think you're going to be great assets to the board. I'm so glad that you're on the board with us. I'm so glad we have seven candidates uh, for this position. There hasn't been a contested election for planning board since the year 2010, where Sandy and I lost our, our bids for the planning board. So uh, one of my points, when I got a person was appointed and I was elected, but when I got appointed, I, I was just saying that there are people who voted for me for this position at one point or another. And I think that applies to Sandy very much. She has a lot of support in town. A lot of experience that uh, she's already worked on um, in, in many ways, and I think that she'll help us a lot with the um, completing the master plan, uh, talking about reaching out and surveys and stuff. I, I don't think that's what we, we haven't had a lot of that for a while. So if we have some history that we can reconnect with and, and strengths that uh, both our uh, experienced candidates bring that um, would help the newer candidates, newer guys. Uh, on the board, and also I think it's very important that we have more females involved in, in town government because we're, we're very over heavy with us men. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, like everyone's saying, the, the seven candidates are very, very strong, uh, resume based, how they presented themselves. Um, my thought process on this I know uh, the two new members. Uh, I've, I've recently got to know Cliff. Um, he's very aggressive. I like the fact that he's aggressive. I've known Dave for a long time, uh, and Dave's, Dave's a, a great guy, also will be uh, a great asset to that planning board. Um, but my thoughts are, I like the, I like the thought of, of um, seamlessness, consistency, and um, I like people in these boards that are uh, I wouldn't say equally as, as aggressive as Cliff, because probably there are not many. Um, but I like the, the fact that people will uh, shake the trees, not take status quo, not be easily manipulated, and um, go on their own thoughts, and with those thoughts being not of their own, but of the town, of the majority of the town. So um, it's hard for me to say out of the seven, um, but um, you know, if, if I had to throw my hat on, on a couple of them, I would say um, um, Mr. Carp and Mr. Mrs. Uh, Altamira are uh, Mr. Carp simply because he was on the planning board yesterday and uh, Sandy because uh, she has been, uh, she's been through it forever. So, and she's very aggressive. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Catino. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to say you know, we're, we're looking at the, the two new members of the planning board as, as newbies, but uh, going to many of the planning board uh, meetings myself, I, I've seen um, Mr. Paul there for the last six or eight meetings and Mr. Kistner for, for half a dozen meetings. And so uh, you know, I believe that they really are more up to speed than many of us are giving them credit for. Uh, and I commend you guys for when you throw your hat in the ring that you – that you sh knew, uh, knew enough to go to those meetings so you c could come up to speed. And so as you're sworn in and at this meeting, that you're not as, as fresh and new with, to the whole experience. Um, yeah, I also uh, like the fact that uh, Mr. Karp was on this, you said, just yesterday. And, uh, you know, and, uh, for, this, for the this, this second vote, uh, I'm, I'm I'm, I'm torn with this, with the rest, because I've worked with so many of them so many times, from Ted and Sandy and, 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 and Finney's another friend of mine, and it's, it's, a, it's a tough choice. This is one of the, this is, these are the big boy seats, and this is where those choices get tough. This is right. Um, I'm not going to restate a lot of what's already been restated about experience. Thank you. I, I can't agree with that enough. Um, I want to. I just want to say, for one thing, just coming off that board, this board needs Brian Carp. Um, Bri we did everything we could to get legacy through before the end of the term, and I have no doubt that had um, it had we known that we weren't going to be able to get it done, that Brian would have taken out nomination papers to run. But when that occurred, it was too late. Um, this is not a board to cut your teeth on. 
I don't have any doubt that Mr. Kistner and Mr. Paul will do a good job and step up to the plate, and they have been coming to the meetings. But when I got on the board, I had already served 15 years and other things. Maybe I'm a slow learner, but it, I would say I had a good year-long learning curve before I felt comfortable in my skin. We've got some really big issues before the board. Legacy is probably the single biggest site plan this board has ever dealt with beyond my history in, in the history of the town. Um, Mr. Kistner used the words judicial aspects and the planning board is one of the four powerhouse boards in the town and they are referred to as a quasi-judicial board and they make serious decisions that affect millions of dollars of people's development and uh, they are extremely consequential and so I cannot say strongly enough how important having experience on this board is and when I got on the board Sandy Altamira was the one that I went to and looked to because she had such a wealth of experience already so I would really urge I, I've never seen a time when we had four open seats at the same time um, we've always been able to adjust to a couple new members, but I, I can't say strongly enough how important right now to get people who know the ropes so that we don't fall behind in the important work for the next year. Um, thanks to all seven applicants. Uh, I think to uh, Mr. Weissmantel's point, um, we could pretty much pick any of these, any two from this group, and uh, the town's not going to be on the losing end. Um, I look at our board, and we just had a 40% turnover. Uh, I look at this board, and currently they're at a 22% turnover. Uh, if you were to put two experienced people who have been on the planning board, it would stay at 22. If you add one more, it's 33, and then 44, roughly. Um, I think that I think having new membership uh, is something that you know, they they can get through. Uh, I think that it's important, uh, as has been mentioned, to have some representation for for downtown. Um, and uh, I guess that's that's my main thing here. I think that uh, um, bringing new blood in and having new opinions uh, uh, going through here is, is, uh, or can be a positive thing. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to uh, base my vote on. Okay. Anybody else have any other thoughts they want to throw on the table real quick? So from, from my perspective, you know, it's really unfortunate. And people can come and go from committees for various reasons. It makes sense. You know, people have lives and you know, resignations happen. It's just part of the process. But it's really unfortunate the timing of how this has taken place. Imagine if we had seven of these great people at the debate night. Imagine if we had seven of these great people, well, not putting signs up everywhere because the place would have been completely cluttered, but <laughs> imagine if we had these great individuals out there meeting the residents and talking to the residents about the direction of Hopkinton and how the planning board is going to help us go in a certain manner. It would have been awesome. It would have been awesome. So, you know, if there's anything that I can leave all, everybody with is the timing of this didn't work out very well. Uh, for the individuals that are here tonight to try and make this work uh, for them as individuals. Uh, it's going to work out well for the town, but please don't, don't go away. We've got the Zoning Advisory Committee, and we're going to have openings there. The Zoning Advisory Committee is a great way to learn about planning, uh, part of the planning process. The Design Review Board is a great place to learn about things and, and cut your teeth a little bit and get some experience. Uh, we've got openings on the personnel committee here in town hall, I believe. We've got openings in other areas of town government that are all very interesting and all can help you learn the pieces and the and the and how the puzzle gets put together when we all come together at town meeting on an annual basis. So please, if you don't make it tonight, please do consider volunteering for something else. It's very rewarding work, and uh, I, I implore that uh, you, you consider that uh, going forward because it will be. It will benefit all of us if you guys stay involved, uh, whether it's involved in the planning board or somewhere else. We will all benefit. Your neighbors will benefit. And we can find a spot for you to help you uh, along in the process of understanding town government, but help you help us run town government. I second that. 
So, so with that, uh, with that timing sort of understood by everybody, it is time to move on now, and I think get to the to the voting piece of this puzzle. Unless others have anything else they want to share. Okay. So the way that I understand the motion that's before us, and please correct me if I'm wrong, now take this sheet, and we've got the names of all seven candidates on the sheet, and we're going to put an X next to two candidates. Um, here, take, keep, oh, you got Yeah, I have one. Do we need to make copies for the second round? Or? Uh, well, we better hang on to one. We've got some more here in case we need them. Let's be optimistic and hand out one to everybody right now. Okay. Mr. Sestari, can you one more time walk us through what we all... All right, I'll take it. When the everybody chairman, got a cut. When the chairman tells you, start by putting your name at the top of your paper. Okay. I haven't told you that yet. <laughs> I state your name. So please uh, walk us through the process one more time. All right, so uh, I believe what we all agreed to is that everybody will put their name at the top of their ballot. And in this first round, we'll go through and choose uh, two people that we would like to appoint to these seats. Uh, all the ballots will be turned in to the chair. The chair will read off each ballot, the name of the voter, and who he or she voted for. We'll keep tally of the votes. And then the tallies will be announced by the chair. And if, uh, if there are uh, two, well, the, the top two vote getters with seven or more votes uh, will be appointed to the positions. In the event of a tie for first place, a tie between two vote getters, uh, then those two people will get the two appointments. If it's a tie for first place across more than two vote getters, then we will go through the process again. Uh, if it's a tie for second place and the first place is solo, we will redistribute ballots and we'll go through the process again and we will only vote for one person each. And we'll continue that process until we have the two seats appointed. Okay, everybody understand the process? That's what we voted earlier. Thank you for reminding us. Mr. Kamalo, any thoughts? Wait, did you count your votes? Please, because I was going to ask you if you could do that as we go through it, right? So I'll read them out if you could keep the tally, because uh, I can designate him to take, keep the tally. If you guys could help with that, that would be great. Okay? All right, so with that, if you could help, please fill your name in at the top of the sheet and mark an X next to two individuals that you are voting for for the planning board for a one-year term. And then if you want to turn them into me, there's no need to fold them over because we're all going to read them out loud. Okay. Now, let's make sure we have 12 things here. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay, everybody good with 12 sheets? All right. Okay, Mr. Weissmantle, Vincent Cerulli and Brian Karp. If I make a mistake with your ballot, speak up, please. Mr. Sestari, Vincent Cerulli and Amy Ritterbush. Mrs. Wright, Sandy Altamira and Brian Karp. John Ferrari, penmanship, Sandy Altamira and Brian Karp. <laughs> Francis the Young, <laughs> much better. Uh, Ted Barker Hook and Vincent Cerulli. Matt Wade, Vincent Cerulli and Brian Karp. Mr. Catino, Vincent Cerulli and Brian Karp. Mr. Kistner, Sandy Altamira and Brian Karp. 
Mr. Ted Stone, Sandy Altamira, and Brian Karp, Dave Paul, Vincent Cerulli, and Mr. Karp, Mr. D'Urso, Sandy Altamira, and Brian Karp, and myself, Sandy Altamira, and Brian Karp. Anybody have any questions about what I read out? Mr. Ted Stone with Sandy Altamira and Brian Karp. I think Brian Karp got it. I think so. How are we doing, Mr. Kamal? Uh, here's the tally I have. Brian Karp, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Then, since I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and Sandy Altamara, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's your tie. Okay. Less than seven. So, did anyone else keep tallies? If there's anyone else that wants to chime in, speak now, please. Okay, so do we all in agreement that Mr. Carp has 10 votes and Mr. Carp? Uh, is appointed to the Board of Selectmen. Did we have a standing, was that motion, that was just the process. We haven't really actually appointed them in that motion, correct? Well, I, the, yeah, the, motion, the, the motion said that the results were binding. The results of the ballot were binding. Okay, hang on one sec. Mr. Kamalo, uh, would you want us to, after we get through this process, do you want us to do an appointing motion as well? I think for formality, yes, that would be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, that's fine. so, but just before we get there, well, before we get to the appointing motion, is everybody on the joint committee in agreement that Mr. Carp will, will be appointed to the planning board with a formal vote? Yes. Yes. Any objections? Any concerns with the process? Anything? Okay. So now we have two individuals, Mr. Cerulli and Ms. Altamira, that both received six votes. So per the process, we're going to pass out the sheets again. Is that correct? And we're going to vote on these two individuals only with one vote. Mm -hmm. Correct? Does everybody agree with that? I have a question. Mr. Ted Stone. What if the next five rounds we do this, everything's tied? What if there's a stalemate? At some point, someone's going to throw water in somebody else and say, change your vote. That's, that's I one. I'd like to be the one throwing the water. Uh, okay, we'll get to that with, if we need to. When so, Mr. Herr goes into his rant about not having even numbers vote. There's yeah. two for down there. And you guys have yours, correct? And here, Mr. Weissman, if you wouldn't mind. So does everybody understand what we're doing this time? Round two, we're going to put our name at the top of the ballot. Point of discussion? Please. Uh, should we hear from the remaining two candidates again? Or okay. Or uh, fair question. Does the board, does the joint committee feel the need to hear from the candidates again, the remaining two? Is there a general consensus for a, to hear more? I don't think we need, based on that response, I don't think that's necessary, but I think it's a fair question. And does anybody from either board have any comments that they'd like to make again? Another fair question. So we're down to two candidates, Mr. Cerulli and Ms. Altamira. Um, does anybody want to chime in uh, on either of those candidates like in a very concise more. manner? I would like to ask some additional questions on the candidates. Is that something we could That do? would not be concise. Okay. Okay. So I think, I think the, the plurality of the board, the committee, is ready to act. Um, but if you've got a couple of quick comments, that's, I think I, that's I fair. I comments, and I want to be positive sounding as, as I can. Um, but the education of both candidates, Sandy and Vinny, uh, Sandy, I believe, has more education, and I think that will be more of a use to us, as well as her experience that she has on the board. And I also want to echo that, Vinny, I think that I enjoyed hearing what you had to say, and I would like to see you continue on with the town in some role. Um, and we have some things in common we'll catch up on later, but um, I do think that, uh, again, Sandy brings the experience. 
and a, a higher education level that is important for us. Okay. Any other thoughts on the two candidates remaining? This is not an easy choice. It is not an easy choice. I think, uh, I think that um, Sandy has done a great job and uh, really has certainly opened my eyes. I didn't know him before here. He was very eye-opening in his uh, presentation. So. I have just one thing I'd like to say as well. I, I do appreciate everybody's um, efforts on trying to fill the positions, and I just want them to all go away with the same sentiments that Mr. Chair has, has so aptly put, is that the opportunities that are coming are, are forthcoming, and, and we need you to really consider um, those positions as, as we move forward. And without that, that situation, we're in this same quagmire that we were in right from the beginning, is that we have four seats open, and you know, we don't want to see this again. We want people to be with vision and be able to stop to make things happen and change things. So that's, I think that's important for all of you that have come and stepped up for this one year position. And I thank you for doing that. Okay, all set. So please fill out the form with your name at the top and mark an X next to one name that you are voting for in round two. And then please turn them in to me. Let's keep these separate. Mr. Kamal, we're going to hang on to these sheets in case there's any kind of discussion after the fact. Um, turn them all in here. Do we have them all? One, two, three. Thank you. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, okay? Everybody agree with 12 sheets. Mr. Weissmantel, Vincent Cerulli. Mr. Wade, Vincent Cerulli. Mr. Ferrari, Sandy Altamira. Mr. DeYoung, Vincent Cerulli. Mr. Sestari, Vincent Cerulli. Mrs. Wright, Sandy Altamira. Mr. Paul, Vincent Cerulli. Mr. Kist Mr. Kistner, Sandy Altamira. Mr. D'Urso, Sandy Altamira. Mr. Print, Mr. Tedstone, Sandy Altamira, Mr. Catino, Vincent Cerulli, and Mr. Herr, Sandy Altamira. Okay, break out the water, Brendan. You got it. So, um, Mr. S Kamalo, what is your official tally, please? Official tally is a tie. And what are the numbers? Six to six, correct? Yeah. Mr. Hate, Sestari. Hate to say this, but if we continued this another night, there would be an odd number of people voting. So if we continued it to another night, Mr. well, assuming we appoint Mr. Carp, uh, then we'd have an additional member who could then vote um, to appoint the second position. That wasn't in the original motion and process that I think we discussed and agreed upon. But if that's what we get to, I think maybe that's what we're going to have to consider. I, I guess I guess I look at where that we are right now. That couldn't happen without a vote and, to change that. I mean, I hate to I hate to make a decision after after only two ties, but I just see us being in a position where if the tie is broken at this point, it's only because somebody wants to get out of the room, and I don't think the decision should be made on that basis. Uh, whereas if we were to continue this with an odd number of people voting, then we would have a clear-cut uh, appointee. But based on what just transpired here, then the appointee comes down to one individual making a decision, and he's standing up in the back of the room, right? If, well, we, if, if none of us change our minds, then Mr. Cart picks the next that's, person. And that's, assume, and that's assuming all the members here still show up at that meeting. And... You know, things like that. There are, there are a lot of variables. Any one of us is a decision maker in it. And if any one of us were to change our minds between now and then, then it changes the dynamic. Okay, so we may get there. I'm not sure we have to go that far just yet. That point. Hang on one sec, please. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Wright. 
have any more discussion about the candidates? I think we should try and resolve this this evening by continuing the process that we agreed to, which would be another round. Um, but so, yeah, I think that's why I want to just kind of go here first. Okay, this is uncomfortable, so I'm going to say something that might be a little uncomfortable. Um, we have two candidates before us. We've talked incessantly about the importance, the, the um, seriousness of this board and the importance of experience. Um, we are looking at one candidate that has years of experience in this position, and as well as Zach and a number of other influential boards. And I mean no disrespect, but we are comparing that to a candidate that has no experience serving on any government board whatsoever and I reiterate I repeat I have never felt the planning board is a board to cut your teeth on there's serious work to do and I would I would ask all the applicants to consider moving into other government positions so they get a little better sense of how town government works and um, I, I just think there is a chasm of difference between these two candidates and for the good of the board and the town, I would ask you to take the experience as the foremost consideration in your vote. Okay, thank you for that input. Anyone else want to offer input? Uh, I guess uh, my initial input is that seven years ago, I had people telling me that the Board of Selectmen was not a board to cut your teeth on. Um, and I've gone through two re-elections since then, and I hope I'm adding value to the board at this point. Um, but uh, I don't. I don't think that that should be the sole basis. Okay, Mr. Giorso. I would like to hear from the candidates and have them explain what they can bring to the board, what their view of this might be, uh, having been in their position. Uh, there was a tie, then another vote for me I had to go through. Uh, what are their thoughts? And maybe they can explain their skills uh, a little bit clearer now that there's only two of them. Okay. So I feel um, very similar to Todd. I'm, I'm into town government now uh, about two hours. I'm cutting my teeth as I sit here. Um, so I look to see, I want to see someone who's who's energetic, someone that is focused, driven, and wants the position. Um, so I don't particularly share Mrs. Wright's, uh, um, you know, the how much how much weight she puts on uh, on experience. But that said, I'm in Sandy's camp. So uh, you know, I guess. It, it's uh, the the experience doesn't matter to me. Um, it's your willingness to work, your willingness to get your hands dirty when you work, and um, and that's that's my thought. I, I, I same as Todd, where I'm not a, a big big. Uh, I don't lean heavily on experience. Okay, Dave. I want to build off of both of that as well and agree because um, we need to send a message that fresh faces are welcome. Wrong with legacy south, but if somebody looked at that and wanted to do something differently, that would be an opportunity. This would be an opportunity for that. Okay. Mr. Weissman. One of the things that keeps my vote the way it is is last time Sandy went before the voters to the planning board, the voters rejected her. And, you know, if she wanted to go before the planning board, she should have been there on the ballot yesterday. Okay. Well, I think that can be said for what the, I mean, I, I think that can be said to everybody. Well, well the timing, the, the timing of how of the being, resignations took place, though, didn't allow certain people to get to the ballot. Yep. You know, so there was some timing. That's what I was talking about a little bit earlier. Uh, anybody else? Hang on, Frank, Mr. Kistner. If I may, interject on, on Ken's statement and with Brendan's is that um, it is correct. And chair recognizes the fact that the timing was was kind of peculiar because we had resignations 
um, step aways, which, which offered up um, two extra seats in the process. So that has to have some validity and weight on, on how we now make that decision. Um, I feel strongly that, yes, the, the power of, of experience should prevail, but we also know from Mr. Um, Sestari um, and his uh, way of um, presenting, cutting his teeth, and where he sits today, that there is a, a possibility that, that um, we might have um, um, I, our eyes wide shut. And maybe we do need to take a look and just say, you know, is it, is it judgmental of us to think that experience outweighs um, um, ability? And so with that going in, maybe we should all just take one quick look at all the possibilities instead of just the experience aspect of it. Okay. Anybody else? So... Okay. Uh, it's true that Sandy is the last candidate to have run and not made the planning board. Um, but I don't see that as a negative. I see that as hundreds of people in Moncton. I think it was 800 or so people that voted. I'm not sure of the number, but in the hundreds easily. And that's hundreds more than ever have even heard of our other candidate. Um, I'd say that that comment that you made, I think, is disrespectful to the democratic process because uh, it's good when we have tested races that we can vote and choose and citizens of town can make their will known. We haven't had that since 2010. And maybe one of the reasons we haven't had that is there is this old boys network that it's hard for women to break through. And uh, I'm confounded why some of my colleagues are voting for someone who has zero experience in town government, zero experience in any kind of political activity or volunteer activity in town, not so negative, but I'd like to know more of him. He seems like a nice guy, but that's a definition of the old boys network. He's a nice guy. Sandy's a nice, a nice person, and she's done a lot for the town, and she has the experience to hit the ground running, and I think it's disrespectful to the entire process uh, you guys can choose who you want, but over and over again, to go for the same person versus no experience against a woman who has 24 years of experience. It's time, to, time for us to make a change in this town that, that doesn't count. Okay, well, you know, Mr. Durso made a point a few minutes ago that I think maybe as we get into this tie situation, it might make sense is to have each of the candidates come up for a minute and just kind of give us a quick hitter on, on, on their perspective uh, with the issue that's before us right now, which is this tie. Uh, so uh, we can do a comment in a second, but is the board in generally in favor of a quick one minute from each candidate? at this point to try and resolve this, or at least so moved. get some more information. So we have a motion to have the candidates come up. There's a motion on the table. We're going to act on it. We have a second. Any discussion on that? Yeah? What's holding us back from having uh, Mr. Carp vote? If it's swearing in, our clerk is here. Uh, we, we haven't actually voted on him yet. Uh, yeah, we haven't appointed him yet, and I think that that's kind of outside the process that we set up earlier this evening, which was we're going to go through this to come to these two candidates, you know. Um, if, if I may, Chair, um, just to reiterate, this is for one year. Yeah. And we, we, we're in the throes of Legacy North. We do need experience in that process. Um, is was that your candidate statement too? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I have no idea, but I'm, I'm speaking for myself right now. So, so that being said, I, I just think that you know, we're in, we have to have a year filled, and 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 something needs to be done, and we can roll this round table all day long with with six and six, and then say. Maybe Brian is is our our deciding voter, but if he's already made his mind up, then 
we're in a we're in a situation where you know it's a lose lose situation because we're not making a decision based upon what we all feel. We're seeing six and six. So, so go ahead, real quick. I just wanted to say that I think it changes the whole arrangement if we include Brian in this. It's not what we set up to do. When we came to yeah, I agree. I agree. I was just about to say that. You know, I think the elected officials in the room need to make this decision this evening, if at all possible. Um, the if at all possible part about this evening. Um, I, I think if we start, given the, the, the nature of the position and the importance of the position, literally, if Brian comes on and he makes the decision, an appointed individual is making a position, you know, swinging this whole thing in one direction or another, and I just think that's a disservice to the elected officials in the room, uh, all of you included, as well as all of us. Uh, so with that, and if there's a general consensus, I think we had a motion on the table in a second, and then we had some discussion that started with Brendan, which wasn't, okay. So, sorry, uh, I forgot. All those in favor of having the candidates address us for one minute each to speak to the issue in front of us, which is why them signify by saying aye. 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 Okay. So with that, we're going to adjust here slightly, and we're going to have, uh, let's do it in alphabetical order. Uh, Mrs. Altamura, first, if you would join us for a one minute. Um, to be fair, she went first last time. We're going to go in alphabetical order, okay, with Mrs. Altamura first and Mr. Cerulli second. Mrs. Altamura, welcome back. Mr. Hurd, thank you so much. Isn't this fun? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what you want me to say. I, obviously, the board's divided. Um, I think that some very good points were made. Those that have spoken for me, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. When you've done something for, you know, 25 years, you, it's nice to know that somebody noticed. Um, my passion is the town, and of all the boards in town, it's planning and zoning. I don't want to do other things. It's, it's the planning and zoning of this town, the way this town unfolds that's so important to me. I have, my family's been here forever. I'm part of the Claflins and the Rice families in town. So, uh, you know, the, the roots go really deep, and I've always been taught that you give back. So when this one-year spot came up, I have played with the idea of, of running again, and I've been urged to run, but, you know, it is a five-year commitment. If, if this appointment goes through and, and the next person runs, you're talking six years. That's, that's a long time. So... I might do it, I might not do it, um, but I understood that it was so important Legacy Farms was getting to a critical point, which is why Brian said he'd stay on. Um, if that is really important, then I think that's where you do want experience. We all want young people on the boards. You need the older people on the boards too, the people that have the history. You need women on the board. You need men on the board. I mean, the more, the more diverse a board is, I think the more effective they are. People who live uptown, I live on Elm Street, so it's not in the center of town, but it's not in some big subdivision off somewhere. Um, I think that the boards need a well-rounded look. I'm willing to do it. I still plan on staying on, on Zach and Commissioner of Trust Funds, um, but... If you need somebody to go up to speed fast, then you've got to go with somebody that's got the experience. It's a big learning curve. And there's, there's several new people on the board. I'm sure you're going to do great. But I think that the, you're going to find that, that it really is a big learning curve. Um, so I'm ready to, to jump in and do that. And um, I guess that's great. I can say about it. Thank, Thank you. you Sandy. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Mr. Cerulli. Welcome back. Thank you. Nice to see you again. Be here. This has been <laughs> Still. quite an experience. So six of you feel that experience is what it's all about. And six of you feel that maybe new questions, new ideas, new directions are better serving the town. That's what this is all about, isn't it? My vote is if you, if you take the same old, same old, you end up with the same results. It's the definition of insanity. I'm here to, to, with a new voice. I have no agenda. I'm not beholden to anyone. The decisions I make are truly mine, based on my thoughts and my beliefs. The town of Hopkinton has been good to me, and I wanted an opportunity to give back. If you think Ms. Altamura has more experience, that's obvious. I'm not going to fight that point. 
But there's a reason she's not on the board now, and it wasn't because of me. So I'm here to ask you to give me an opportunity to do something that hasn't been done by her, and that is get on the board and make some man roads. That's pretty, it, pretty much it. Okay, thank you. So uh, let's give this one more go. <clears throat> and then um, just one, sorry, Claire, two. Mr. Weissman, if you could please. So we're going to see if this is the definition of insanity. Um, and take one more stab at this. Uh, okay. Yeah, those are filled out ones, sorry. I have five turned in so far. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Ken just has to finish uh, John's. One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12. Thank you. Okay. Ready, Mr. Kamala? Ready. Mr. Kistner, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. Wade, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. Ferrari, Mrs. Altamira, Mr. DeYoung, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. Weissmail, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. D'Urso, Sandy Altamira. Mr. Paul, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. Sestari, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. Tedstone, Mrs. Altamira, Mr. Catino, Mr. Cerulli, Mrs. Wright, Sandy Altamira, and myself, Sandy Altamira. How do we do? No, I got seven. Want me to do it again? Okay. Okay, anyone correct me if I get it wrong? Mrs. Wright, Mr. Alt Mrs. Altamira, Mr. Catino, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. Ted Stone, Mrs. Altamira, Mr. Sestari, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. Paul, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. D'Urso, Mrs. Altamira, Mr. Weissmantle, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. DeYoung, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. Ferrari, Mrs. Altamira, Mr. Wade, Mr. Cerulli, Mr. Cl Mr. Kistner, Mr. Cerulli, and myself, Mrs. Altamira. Sorry? Seven to five, okay. Claire got six. She didn't say seven to six. She said she gets six. I had seven five. There is six on each. We're gonna do it one more time. Okay, we're gonna get this right. I think the deciding factor was me. I, I well, let's let's get the count done first. Okay, the process is as important as the should, results. The should we have somebody verify your? Why don't we reading? have somebody else read these? I'm gonna have the vice chairman of the board of selectmen read the results from these twelve sheets. Is everyone in agreement with that? Yes. We can have this for audit so purposes moved. later. So here you go. Mr. Catino. Mr. Kistner, Cerulli. Mr. Wade, Cerulli. Mr. Ferrari, Ms. Antomera. Uh, Mr. Dion, Cerulli. Mr. Weismantle, Cerulli. Mr. Durso, Ms. Antomera. Mr. Paul, Cerulli. Mr. Stastari, Cerulli. Mr. Tedstone, Ms. Altamera. Mr. Catino, Cerulli, Ms. Wright, um, Ms. Altamira, Mr. Herr, Ms. Altamira. Okay. Yeah, seven to five. Okay, Mr. Kamal, could you please give me your tally results? Seven to five. In favor of? Seven. Okay, so Mr. Kamal is reporting that the tally is seven to five in favor of Mr. Cerulli for the second position on the planning board for a one-year term. 
Does the board joint committee concur with that result? Yes. Yes. Everybody concur? Yes, Everybody sir. comfortable with the process and the result? Not comfortable, but the result is what it is. It was a figurative question. Okay. Um, so, with that, Mr. Make a motion that we appoint uh, Brian Carpenter. Okay, so we have a motion on the table that would include uh, for a one-year term through uh, May of 2017 election, right? That's your motion? Yes. So we have a motion on the table? Second. And a second. The motion on the table and the second is to appoint Mr. Carp and Mr. Cerulli to the planning board through next May. Any discussion? I'd like to say something. Please do. Thank you. I changed my vote, and I want everyone to know why I changed my vote. Sandy is on Zach, and has been, and I am extremely, extremely grateful for everything that she brings forth. And it was a very, very hard decision for me to make. But in order for me to make that decision, I had to look at what was the alternative? And the alternative to that would have been that we leave it upon either Brian, who has had to go through this process himself, or we sit here and we say experience versus raw cutting of teeth, as we've so deemed it. Um, I myself am raw. I need to cut my teeth. And as much as I like Sandy, and as much as I feel she's integral in every aspect of her, her intention, something had to be done. So that hard decision, I'll take it on my shoulders to carry. Thank you, Mr. Kissner. Anybody else have anything they want to say? Okay. Only, so. a, only a tweak in the motion that you restated. It is not through next May, it's through the next annual town election, just so that uh, we're technically correct on the motion. Okay, that's the motion. Who, who made the motion? I'm sorry. Mr. Weissmail, yeah, that's right. You're correct. You're good with that. And the second was, Me. you're good with that. I am. Okay, so the motion and the second is still on the table. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your participation tonight. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 So thank you to all the candidates that came this evening. We really hope to continue your participation. Thank you. Mr. Kamala, I'm going to hand these sheets to you, Mr. Urso you. or Mr. Tedstone. May I thank the Board of Selectmen for your efforts tonight? Okay. Thank you. Hey, Ryan, how are you? Continue on. We've got other business to okay, attend to. Good. Thank you for coming. Okay. Uh, we're going to go back to the public hearing that was opened at 8 p.m. and then continued until we wrapped up uh, the work uh, with respect to the planning board. Again, to the applicants that are here this evening and their representation. Um, thank you for your patience. I'm very sorry that we uh, scheduled it uh, in such a way that it didn't play out exactly uh, as we had printed in the agenda. Uh, my apologies for that. Uh, we'll work on that going forward. Uh, with that, if you would be so kind as to join us at the podium, and there are some folks there, uh, we'll come to you in one minute. I'm going to ask Mr. Kamalo if he could just sort of frame the question or frame the issue in front of us via item number 10 in the agenda bring our new members a little bit up to speed on where we are, and then we will take it from there um, as a board and go to the applicant as well. So just give us a minute to kind of bring everybody up to speed. Excuse me, folks, if we could, if you guys want to take it outside, we've got a public hearing we're in the middle of right now. So uh, thank you. Mr. Kamala. Through the chair, uh, as we know, all town makers is an established uh, Mr. Kamal, I'm sorry, one minute, please. Uh, Mr. Kissner, would you do us a favor and grab those doors on your way out and close them? Thank you. That's my specialty, buddy. <laughs> That's my specialty. <laughs> sorry, folks, we just want to make it so we can all hear what's going on. Thank you, Cliff. 
Yes. Okay, Mr. Kumar, please. As I was saying, Old Town Liquors is an established and licensed uh, business in town. Uh, it came to the board's attention, uh, I think several months ago, uh, that the, the outgoing owner, uh, Bill Tetlow, intended to sell the business. And he has been uh, in touch with town, kept us informed in terms of that process. Uh, recently, we finally learned that he had found uh, somebody who was interested in purchasing the uh, the business, uh, namely Forster Street Liquors. Um, we received the application uh, in the usual manner, sent it to town departments for review, uh, as well as to town council for their legal review. Uh, there were questions uh, from town council that I am happy to say have now been fully responded to by the applicant. Uh, tonight, uh, we are asking the board that you consider uh, transferring the license uh, from uh, uh, Mr. Bill Tetlow to the new owners, Foster Street Lakers. Okay. All right, so just uh, a little bit more clarification, if I could, for our new members, and perhaps to remind myself how this all works. We're in a public hearing right now. What we'll do is we'll take information from the applicant, okay? Uh, the applicant will provide us uh, their thoughts on, on, on the question before us in terms of the application for the liquor license transfer. Uh, the board will then have an opportunity to ask the applicant questions. Okay, so we'll have maybe a little bit of dialogue back and forth. At the conclusion of that, as part of a public hearing, we'll go to the public. Anyone that's here that wants to speak to the issue will have an opportunity to do so. Uh, we'll take that information, okay? And then once we sort of exhaust that process and the public uh, are done giving input, if any, then we'll close the public hearing. Okay, and then all testimony specific to this issue will be over, at least for tonight. And then, um, well, we'll be done for the issue unless we have a new public hearing at some point in the future. But we'll close the public hearing, and then the board will have further deliberation and possible votes. Okay, does everybody understand that process and everybody agree? Yep. Okay, Mr. Kamala, did I get that accurately? Y yes, you did. And also to clarify uh, for the sports information, we did not receive any adverse comments from town departments other than the usual comment from the Board of Health that the applicant will still need to make the appropriate uh, applications to the board. And we're going to get to the police chief input at some point in this process too, I assume, correct? But not to yes, say his testimony, but information that he weigh in on this at all. Let's yes, get if, if the board has any questions. Um, but for the record, we did not receive any adverse comments from any town department. Okay, so we'll come to all that in a minute. So that's the public hearing process that we're in the middle of right now, okay? So with that, welcome. If you could give us your name and just uh, your relationship. Uh, my name, my name is Greg DeMarcus. I'm an attorney in, uh, for, with offices in Lynn, and to my right is Christopher Laco. He's the applicant for the transfer of the license. Uh, he has he has formed a, an LLC known as Foster Street Liquors LLC, which actually operated a liquor store, package store in Peabody for the last four years called McNamara's in 10 Foster Street in Peabody. And uh, Mr. Laco, uh, I went to his establishment on multiple occasions. It, it was an impeccably run um, liquor store. Uh, never had a violation, never had a problem at that liquor store. Um, in his four years of ownership. He recently sold that liquor store four year, uh, uh, excuse me, a, f a, a few months ago, and now he's uh, entered into an agreement with Mr. Tetlow, who's the current owner, um, W.T. Pond Corporation, to purchase the business as well as the real estate at 6872 Main Street in Hopkinton. Uh, in order to finance the acquisition of the uh, purchase of the real estate and the business, uh, Mr. Laco has applied for SBA financing uh, from Rockland Trust Company, and he's received a commitment letter for that financing. Uh, part of the commitment, though, is that we, they're, they're seeking a pledge of the liquor license. So today, in addition to seeking a transfer of the liquor license, we're asking the board to allow a pledge of the liquor license to Rockland Trust Company. Um, in, in addition to that, we're asking that uh, Mr. Laco be appointed the, uh, the manager. Mr. Laco is the sole owner of, uh, of uh, Foster's um, 
Street Liquors LLC. He's going to be the main employee there. He's going to work over 40 hours. He's going to be the manager. And as I, as I said, he's a very experienced operator. And I, and I think you can expect a first-class run establishment um, and a good successor to Mr. Tetlow's uh, establishment. So if you have any questions of me, uh, Mr. Laco, we're here to answer the questions. But as I said, tonight we're seeking approval of the transfer, a pledge of the license, and an appointment of, of Mr. Laco as the manager. Thank you very much for that input. Mr. Kamala, do you have anything to add at this point? Nothing at this point. Thank you. Mr. Sestari. Um, first, I would like to just highlight for the other board members that there were no comments at all from public safety. Um, so, I mean, I guess I am curious as to whether or not they had any indication to weigh in on this at all. Um, I believe that's a question to Mr. Kamalo. Yeah. yeah. It's a question. I'm looking into the answer. Okay. I'll continue. Um, welcome to Hopkinton, Mr. Laco. Um, so is it your intent to, uh, are you, are you living in Peabody right now? And, uh, no, I live in a Medfield. In Medfield? Okay. Um, and so you're planning on, uh, being the manager there. Do you have anything on, in your background, uh, or your record of any violations for, um, uh, you know, driving under the influence? Anything where you've pled guilty or been found guilty of any uh, motor vehicle operating uh, infractions or anything like that? No? Okay. Speeding tickets. Yeah, I've got some of those too. So, um, And it's your intent to uh, continue operating it as, as a full liquor store, I assume? Okay. And how many years of uh, running a liquor store do you have? Is it just the one or have you... So you've had uh, four years, and uh, why did you why did you decide that you wanted to uh, change your operation, go from Peabody it down to Hopkinton? Too far. too far. I've made the commute to Peabody from here. It, it's far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great. Uh, I don't have any other questions at this point. Okay. Mr. Catino. Again, welcome to Hopkinton. It's an absolute beautiful building. Uh, Mr. Tetlow did a fabulous job with the, with the restoration of it. Absolutely. Uh, keep it up because it's a, it, it's a gem for the, for the downtown, and it's, and it's part of what we want um, the downtown to exude that kind of, uh, that kind of feeling. Um, so that being said, um, in the last six months, We've had a couple incidents in, in, in Hopkinton with, with liquor sales and stuff. So I just want, to, want you to know that we come down hard on um, purveyors that uh, make mistakes. And so I, I just hope with your experience that, that we never have to see you up here for anything else. So, but that being said, welcome. We're glad to have you. and, and uh, Thanks for coming. Mrs. Wright. Um, yeah, I think your attorney probably answered the question for me. My, my main question or concern, of course, would be oversight. Uh, you see a pattern going on here, but uh, that seems to have been answered by the fact that you said Mr. Lycos is going to be putting in pretty much full-time work there. Um, I am trusting that you're coming in as an experienced operator, so you've, you understand the ramifications and you understand how to operate this kind of a business responsibly. Um, clearly, you will have other people working under you. Um, and I, you know, I, I would just assume and trust that you will take the proper steps to have people that are adequately trained. Um, there will be times when you won't be supervising. Um, so my only concern would be adequate supervision. And, it appears from your experience that you you are fully aware of that, as you've you've been that you've been that route already. Um, so I'm not asking a question. I guess I'm just exp I'm just stating, you know, where my only concern is, and it appears that that you know you'll have you'll have that under under control. 
<laughs> I think you raise a great point, Mrs. Wright, and you don't have to ask a question. You can make as many statements as you want as part of the process and just say this is how I'm thinking and feeling and this is how I'll look at things going forward. So no, no need to always ask a question, okay. but you're welcome to put your statements out there as well. Mr. Ted Stone. So to build on what some of these people have said, um, I've been to a few of these selectmen meetings. Today happens to be my first one as a board member. Uh, I have seen them come down historically uh, very hard on violations, uh, being uh, selling to overserve people, selling to minors, and um, you're, you're coming into an establishment that, that has been hit by a suspension for one of those violations. So as Mrs. Wright said, it, this is more of a statement. Just know that if you come back here for doing the wrong thing, there's not a whole lot of lenience. So it, it might be better to do your due diligence now and really, uh, really get into the heads of your employees and yourself that uh, when you come back here, if, you, if there's a mistake, there's not a whole lot of uh, um, lenience, leniency from the board. Uh, that we take it very, very serious, the, uh, the sale of alcohol to the proper people in the proper conditions. Good. Okay. Any other thoughts from the board? Um, yeah. Uh, are, are you TIP certified? Yes. Yes. And uh, when you hire your employees, do you make sure that they're TIPs certified as well? It's not necessary, but I'm going to send it in. Uh, sometimes the police department is making training, and I'm going to send it. Yeah. I, I believe that in the policy that we approved a couple weeks ago, was that included? That uh, or even before that, that everybody be TIP certified, Mr. Kamala? I think that was in restaurants and bars, though. Oh, that it? was restaurants yeah. and bars? Yeah. Okay. That policy, anyway. Okay. But I know that the police chief does offer training mm -hmm. uh, a couple times a year for our establishments in town. Okay. Um, and the only other thing that I will add, and, and this isn't directed toward you, Mr. Lacos, uh, I would like to say regarding Mr. Catino's comments, and that building, uh, Mr. Tetlow did a fantastic job at rehabbing that building. I think it's uh, one of the gems in the center of our town, uh, really a model of, of what I'd like to see uh, you know, go across. There are a lot of beautiful buildings, don't get me wrong, uh, but it's really a model for the center of town. So, And, and an argument to maintain it as is. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, if, we, if like, we, want, we like if, that building. We like if we want to relate that to this like discussion, that. yes. <laughs> okay. Anything else? So uh, just from my perspective, real quick, and my colleagues touched on it, so we'll be very brief. There is not a, you know, one, you know, first, first infraction. Um, we look the other way and say, okay, now you've made your one bad mistake. Don't do it again. First infraction, your establishment will be closed. It'll be closed for several days. It will cost you thousands of dollars. There's no uh, wiggle room in that. We have a policy specific to how we're going to handle these things. And um, there is no sort of a trial period or, okay, we'll let you go with one. You know, it doesn't happen. You cannot serve people that are intoxicated. You cannot serve, serve people that are underage. There's lots of things you can't do. And if any of those are done, we will take the license and put it on hold or whatever it is we do legally uh, for a period of time. It'll cost money. There'll be a significant impact to your business. So please, we want you in town. We, we welcome you in town. Um, but we want to understand sort of together, have this understanding right up front that there is zero tolerance policy in a place. And we do enforce it. And if you contact any of your competitors in the community, they will tell you it hurts. Okay, so with that, uh, we can try to move this along. Mrs. Wright. I just want to add one thing. Um, there have been two recent liquor infractions in town. Both of them did not involve restaurants. They involved liquor stores in both cases. The um, management stated that the individual gave no indication of intoxication. They didn't show anything on surveillance cameras. Um, at the end of the day, this board was not sympathetic to that argument. Um, the operators of the stores are expected to use their due diligence um, and, and um, there was not a lot of sympathy given to an argument that it was hard to tell. Um, so just building on what the chairman has said, um, it is taken very seriously. Okay. 
Uh, one last question. Are there any reasons why the license can't be transferred to you right now? Is everything clean and free? Uh, clean and free? Um, there's nothing holding up uh, why you would be able to move on this soon? Mr. Kamal, are you aware of anything? Through the chair, I just want to confirm with Mr. Tetler that the tax, the outstanding taxes have been preserved. I'm sorry, I keep saying, I'm, I can't hear you. <laughs> um, a couple of weeks back, there may have been some outstanding taxes to the town. I just want to make sure that those have been resolved. Let's well, so all be taken care of. Okay. Has been taken care of or will be taken care of at the closing? It's been taken care of. It's done yes. now. Okay. So, uh, yes. go ahead. Also through the chair, to Mr. Sestari's question, I did confirm with the police chief they did review both aspects of the application regarding the transfer as well as the manager uh, being proposed, and his department has no adverse comments on those Great. two aspects of the application. Thank you, Mr. Kamal. And Mr. Kamal, was town council, um, did town council take a look at this issue and work, look through the documents and everything? Yes, uh, in fact, I'll say the, the, the applicant's attorney has been very responsive to the questions from town council. And town council doesn't have any concerns at this point? At this point, no concerns. Okay. Anything else from the applicant that you want to share or talk about? No, uh, I don't think there's anything else to add. Okay, good. So we're still in the public hearing portion of the process. Does anyone from the public want to make any comments specific to this license application transfer? Sir, if you could, please. <laughs> Just share your name and address with the community. Yeah, just a question, Barry Rosenblum, 10 Briarcliff Drive. What is the pledge? Um, could you explain that as far as uh, the bank, Rockland Bank, owning the license? So Rockland Bank would not own the license, but they'd be able to attach the license in case the loan that the individual takes out uh, to pay to buy the business uh, is not paid. It's a way to sort of secure uh, the payments to the bank. But I'll let the attorney, if you would, please comment on it. So what is the impact to the town if there's a problem with the business aspect of paying the loan, his debt? Okay, let's let the attorney comment on that. Under, under Chapter 138, Section 25, the law allows a loan to be secured by a pledge. It's a little different than a, than a, than a, a mortgage on a house, where if you default, the bank takes the mortgage, okay? What's different is if, um, if there's a default on the note, which there won't be, I'll just say that as an aside, but if there was a default under the note and the bank exercised its rights, for any transfer, they would have to go get approval just like he would. If he, if he went to sell it to anybody, they'd have to come to the town, they'd have to go get approved by the ABCC. There's no, it's not a short circuit process. But what it does do is it prevents if, if it prevents him from selling it to somebody, uh, if, if, if he's in default and they've got a pledge and a license, the, the, the person will know that there's a pledge and a license. But uh, if he defaults, they'll find a buyer, and the buyer's got to be vetted by you just like you're vetting Mr. Laco here tonight. And, it's, and it's, um, it's, it's allowed specifically by Chapter um, 138, Section 25, and to be quite honest, if we weren't to get the pledge, you wouldn't be able to get the financing and do this deal. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, it's a condition of the loan. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Kamal. Yeah. In, in fact, I think this question has come up before, and generally, I think there is interest in knowing whether the, the town's rights as the issuer of the license are in any way are eroded by the pledge. Town Council has confirmed before that the pledge does not in any way take away the board's authority as the licensing authority. Okay. That's correct. All right. Any other questions, comments, input from the public specific to this application? Okay. Please. If you could come to the come to the microphone, please, Mr. Tello. Just by introducing Chris and his family and their personalities. Um, wonderful gentleman, very congenial. He's been in this country not that long and has done remarkably well since he's been here. His wife has done well in finance and they have a daughter in pharmaceutical school. Um, an example of his character, I call, had to call Peabody uh, City Hall a couple of times to find out where we were with the transfer of his liquor license when he was transferring his liquor license 
uh, with a contingency on purchasing my place. And uh, first time I talked to the town clerk, and she said, who is it? And I said, Chris Lakow. Oh, Chris Lakow, he's wonderful. <laughs> and I had same thing with the, uh, the woman that was in charge of the licensing there in town. So by way of introduction, a very nice family. Great. Thank you for that input. Anyone else from the public? Seeing none, I'll entertain, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So with the public hearing now closed, thank you all for your input. Uh, the board will take uh, some action, possibly specific to the application. Mr. Ted Stone, let's start down here. Well, on face value and everything that I've heard, um, I don't have any issues. I think that um, the fact that Mr. Tetlow spoke uh, to the town where these guys had done their business, they were spoken very highly of. Um, I think that's a, uh, a feather in their cap. And, um, you know, as long as, as long as they know that, uh, that there's, like you said, there's no wiggle room uh, on a mistake, then, then uh, I'm good with as it sits. Okay. Mr. Catino. Yeah, and hearing, uh, hearing from our public safety officials uh, that there were no instances, and there were no instances in, uh, in Peabody, and um, he promises to keep the building up. I'm good. I like reaffirming he promises to keep the building up. Mrs. Wright. <laughs> I would agree with that. I have no further questions. Thank you. Mr. Starr. Um, I don't have any further questions for the applicant. Um, just, Mr. Kamala, could you refresh my memory? And this might just be something that uh, I'm making up, but was there any policy in town around... Uh, the owner being the manager of a liquor store. I seem to recall there being some discussion around something like that where we really were trying to, well, we were either saying no or trying to at least steer owners clear of being the day-to-day -day manager also. Can you refresh my memory, or, or did I just make that up? Through the chair, um, no, you are not making that up. That particular issue did come up uh, with regards to one issue or application that came before the board. Okay. It was not discussed as a general policy. That's fine. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we have two requests before us in terms of action. Uh, the first is that the board approve the transfer of the liquor license uh, from Mr. Tetlow's uh, organization to Foster Street Liquors, doing business as Old Town Liquors. So you're going to continue as Old Town Liquors. That's what I see here. Uh, and then the second request and action item before us is a request to uh, approve the pledge of the liquor license to Rockland Trust to secure the loan document or to secure the loan. Um, what's the word I'm trying to say here? Secure the loan uh, process application. Fair? Okay. So and we'll clean that up, I guess, in a motion. So, Mr. Sestari. I'd like to make a motion uh, that the Board of Selectmen vote to approve the transfer of liquor license from Old Town Liquors to Foster Street Liquors, DBA Old Town Liquors. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the transfer of the liquor license. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Next question opportunity or request before us is to approve the pledge to Rockland Trust to secure the loan for the uh, business acquisition. So moved. Okay. Council, is that motion in order from your perspective? Yes, that's correct. Okay. Mr. Kamala, you got that motion correct? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. Okay, gentlemen, you're all set. Good luck, and we'll see you around, okay? You. Mr. Tetlow, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good night. My so, apologies, sorry, guys, Chair. for running over. Mr. Chair, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. Perhaps this was discussed once I was out of the room. What's happening with the approval of the manager? Uh, Back to the board, or? We did not discuss at any point during the public hearing who the manager was going to be. Well, I thought the manager of record was the owner. He just said it was him. Yeah. 
yes, there needs to be a formal vote. But yes, no, he's going to be the manager. He's going to rip over. I'm the sole proprietor. He's the sole proprietor. Okay, so, so hang on one sec. So we did a motion and a second, and we voted to transfer the liquor license. Mm -hmm. The liquor license is going to name him as the manager of record, right? We did a, trans we did a motion and a per second, and then we approved the pledge of the, the license to Rockland Trust. So are you suggesting that we need to do a third motion to approve him as the um, manager of record? Please. So moved. Second. Okay. So let me let me do this. If you're in your motion, it's going to include his name. And I'm sorry, sir. It's just escaped me at the moment here. Christopher Lactos. Lactos. Okay, as the manager of record, that's in your motion, right? And the second was Mr. Yeah, absolutely. Tino. You didn't hear me say that, yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, so is that motion in order, Mr. Yes. Kamala? Yep. And you're okay with that motion? Okay. All right. So we want to do this too. Any discussion on the naming of the manager? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. With that, we are done. Thank you very much, and thank you for your patience. I'm really sorry yes. we held you up. Have a, good night. Have a good night. Okay, Mr. Kamal, item number 11 on the report, uh, I'm sorry, it's for us actually, is liaison reports. So the liaison reports is just the time after we uh, assign committee assignments for the year when various board members report in what's going on and these other committees that we interact with. Uh, so you'll see how this plays out in a second. Mr. Sestari. Uh, yeah, after a brief hiatus uh, leading up to town meeting, the Charter Review Committee has begun meeting again. We met last week. We're meeting tomorrow. We're meeting next week, trying to get through input from various town uh, committees and departments. And uh, so we're, we're chugging along, uh, and we'll be getting to a point relatively soon, I would say, where we're going to be uh, of course, all meetings are open to the public to attend, but we're planning on getting uh, more formal input sessions where it's uh, the public that gets to focus on giving us uh, their input. Okay, great. Any other liaison reports? Mr. Catino. Yeah, the uh, Irvine Tadaro group is, is moving along strongly. Uh, I actually missed the last meeting because it's um, here. Um, but uh, we are sending out a, a survey. Um, finding out what some of the input that some of the uh, um, residents might have. Um, what else did we, what else have I done? The Marathon Fund, we gave, we, we gave out uh, several uh, scholarships a couple weeks ago, and uh, that's all I've got on my list right now. Okay. Mr. Tedstone, any liaison reports? No, nothing changed since the slacking. last meeting. <laughs> Mrs. Wright, anything? <laughs> I would like to ask the chair what the procedure will be for um, reestablishing the liaison assignments. Excellent question, and we will cover that at a future meeting. Um, there's a process that we go through. Uh, it's fairly straightforward, but we'll cover that soon. Good. Okay, before July Any 1 is when the fiscal year kicks in, and that's when I think we the planning board took a long time. Do that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it will. we won't go there now. <laughs> no, um, no, okay, I don't have anything to report. Uh, liaison wise um, so we can move ahead uh, mr. Kamalo town managers report let's talk trash trash talking yeah um, included in the board packet uh, is a description of the three options that town staff have been discussing with EL Harvey uh, the options are manual trash and recycling which will be the status quo uh, automated trash and recycling is the second option and then the third option is manual trash and automated recycling uh, i provided the detailed cost estimates for each option uh, highlights are as follows if we maintain the current service uh, year one will be 667 which is in fact the same amount as what we're paying and then if we went with the automated trash and recycling year one would go down to 652 uh, that's a saving for the town and then um, in option three uh, we will uh, for for year one uh, the fee will be 667 uh, which is the same as what we're paying this year uh, in terms of increases uh, over the five-year period the current 
program, which is manual trash and manual recycling, uh, there is a 2% increase in year two, three, four, and five. Uh, with the automated trash and recycling, the proposed increase is in year two at 2.25, uh, and the same for the remainder of the contract years. Um, with the manual trash and automated recycling, the increases are 0% first and second year, and then 2% for years three, four, and five. Um, I think in terms of highlights as to why this, uh, this option, um, which has the three options that we can pick from, appears to be attractive, and, and as we have said before, uh, staff is recommending that uh, the board look at uh, option two, which is automated trash and recycling. Here's why. Um, based on some of the foundation that we have laid in the past years, uh, the automated trash and recycling is likely to realize and continue uh, bringing back $40,000 per year uh, to the town. And so, therefore, over the five-year period, the town may be looking at $200,000 in savings. And also, number two, as you see, year number one, with automated trash and recycling, there is a drop in, 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 in fee from 667 to 652. Um, how do we explain the 0.25 increase per year uh, from year two to year five as compared to the other two options? You see that higher number because as we have said and explained before, the contractor and not the town would be purchasing the barrels uh, for both solid waste and recycling. We have, in our conversations with the contractor, um, discussed what happens at the end of the <coughs> five year period. We've explained before, the contractor purchases the barrels, they own, they service, they maintain the barrels. However, we also are saying this is a partnership where the town uh, is making some investment into the program and therefore, uh, if, if the town decides to move forward uh, with this proposal, we would, as part of the contract negotiations, negotiate some form of ownership for the community at the end of the contract period. Reason being, the town decides to go with a different contractor. We don't want to find ourselves back to square one where we are wondering who will purchase the barrels for the town. So that's an issue that we are, if, if the decision is to move forward with this option, we will continue to explore in, term, in, in the context of negotiating the contract. Uh, there's also been uh, the, the, the issue regarding aesthetics. We have, uh, uh, we have argued uh, that the automated trash and recycling is good for the community in terms of providing uh, barrels that at least will take care of some of the uh, material that you see blown on the street on windy days. Um, and also, thirdly, we believe this is a safer option uh, in terms of uh, public safety from the viewpoint of the people who are actually working for EL Harvey as well as the people who are driving on town roads. Uh, and, and finally, uh, we believe um, the second option is good for the community in the sense that it reflects what we have heard from the community. When the town did the citizen satisfaction survey and asked the question whether the residents would be willing to support automation, uh, I think approximately 83% of the town said they were willing to go this way. And since the board started the discussions regarding this topic, we all have received emails in support of moving in this direction. So in a nutshell, good for the town financially, aesthetically uh, would be an improvement. Uh, it also enhances public safety. And finally, this responds to what we've been hearing from the public in terms of what they are looking for in terms of uh, uh, waste management. Okay. So before we go down a path too far here, let me just ask Mr. Kamalo a couple of clarifying questions that sort of help set us up for what I hope will be another discussion another night. Mr. Kamalo, when do we need to make a decision about this if we make a decision at all? I think here's, here's the interesting challenge. If the decision is not to move forward uh, with the um, negotiations with E.L. Harvey, then we have to do an RFP. So I, I absolutely need that decision today. 
Okay, so if we make a decision today to move forward with the negotiations, we are making a decision to move forward with the negotiations only and not making a decision about what we're going to do. I believe it's in the best interest of the town that if we move forward with the negotiations, we have at least a focused discussion. Is there any option that the board is leaning towards? And that's where we would put our energies towards. So there's where I get a little nervous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let me just say real quick that it's 10 past 10. We're running over our allotted time for this evening already quite a bit. Um, if there's any issue, well, there's a few of them, but if there's any issue that stirs the passion of the Hopkinton residents, and rightfully so, it is trash. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, so we think it's a fairly benign topic. It gets picked up. It gets thrown in the truck. But the, 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 the barrel, the size of the barrel, the color of the barrel, when the barrel goes out, how many times it goes out, how many barrels do I get? I mean, I could go on with 10 other things that people will talk about. Um, it will all come up, and it will stir some passions, like uh, some other topics have stirred passions in recent years. So... We have to be very careful about this, and we have to be respectful of the community and their concerns about trash. So uh, I'm just concerned that we have two new members joining us this evening, and there's a lot of information you just put out there, and we're sort of running out of energy, at least one member is. And uh, I just think it's a big topic to try and tackle tonight, but I'm open to some suggestions if we want to try and move it forward. But let's... Please give me a little bit of deference here if I think this is just getting out of control. Mr. Sestari. Yeah, I guess, I guess a couple comments, but first I want to ask a question. We've got three different scenarios here. They're all with Harvey's. Um, you're saying that if we don't want to move forward with negotiations with Harvey's, then we need to basically try to make a decision tonight so you can move on. But if we decide that we're going to go, that we're, we're favorable with moving forward with one of these three options, is there any more negotiation? Because I'm seeing real numbers here. And, and I guess that's part of the basis of any decision for us. Yes, there's more negotiations. Remember, the issue regarding solid waste management is not just about money. There are also, this is a partnership with EL Harvey where we, as a community, benefit from public education. We always put that on the shoulders of the, of the contractor. There are also other benefits relative to uh, bulk items. What do we do with bulk items? We always put that on the shoulders of the, of the, of the, of the contractor. Uh, and then thirdly, <coughs> as you know, the town is building a new DPW facility. At some point during the construction, our fuel depot at the DPW on Wood Street would be out of commission. So as part of these discussions with EL Harvey, I will certainly be talking about can EL Harvey partner with the town in that regard. So it's more than money. Okay. Yeah. Now, now my, only other, my other comment uh, with respect to the actual issue here, um, you know, Mr. Herr, I think he hit, hit the nail on the head. You know, trash is one of those third rails in town, and we found that out. Uh, I don't know if it was five, six, seven years ago, something like that. Uh, and I think everything has turned out pretty well. Um, but at the same time, I personally wouldn't want to push the limit any further. I think that right now our trash is working fine. And while Mr. Kamala was saying that we have gotten input in emails uh, around this topic and automation, the emails that I've seen, and of course now tomorrow I'll start getting a flood of others, but the emails that I've seen have been out there in strong support of moving to single stream. Um, and, and I also noticed that that was one of the topics that was coming up in the debates and things like that. I never knew that moving to single stream was an issue that people were opposed to on the board. <laughs> and I think that it's, it's one of those things where I know for a fact I've been in meetings where we've discussed it with Harvey's in the past, and they somewhat dissuaded us uh, from moving in that direction because they said that, uh, we wouldn't find any significant jump in, in compliance with recycling. They said that Hopkinton is one of the high, has one of the highest rates of recycling of any of the communities that they serve. You know, all that said, you know, if we go single stream and it's easier for people, I'm fine with that. It's easier for me, too, because, you know, a lot of my family, they, they make no distinction from one barrel to another. So now I don't have to move things around. Um, so, you know... Just speaking broadly right now, I'd like to say going single stream doesn't seem like a an issue that people should be getting upset about. Um, and for me personally, uh, it, it would you'd have to 
pull my teeth to get me to try to, uh, to get me to vote to change the trash side of the equation. Mr. Catino. Um, yeah, I was actually one of those people that signed the petition against the Board of Selectmen uh, several years ago when we went from unlimited to, to two trash barrels. And um, one of the great things about Harvey with their two trash barrels uh, in the last several years is they've, they've been lenient. And it, uh, about the, uh, I think that whatever you negotiated at the time, I believe it was two 32-gallon trash barrels, which is just about the size of one of my kitchen trash barrels. Um, and they've been very lenient in allowing people to, to use a 40-gallon or something, and they still dump it. If, if we were to vote to go to the two 32-gallon ones put out by Harvey, I believe that there would be um, uh, a severe pushback. The other pushback that I heard, and, it, and I'm actually okay with it, is the 96-gallon, the big giant one uh, for the uh, single-stream recycling, um, because we'd be able to I would put a lot more rather than me putting out uh, a half a dozen of those little um, rectangles. But the but some of the emails that we've that, that I know I've been getting have been saying that people just have no way to put that that large 96 gallon uh, container. So I know, I'm I'm with Mr. Sestarius. If you you know, you can mess with the recycling, but don't mess with the trash. Mr. Andy Kamala would like to challenge or discuss some point made by somebody. I can tell. No, in, 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 fact, in fact, I do agree with uh, Mr. Cortino in terms of the concerns that have been expressed relating to the 96 gallon barrel. In our continuing discussions with the contractor, there is now agreement uh, that the contractor will agree to substitute a smaller cart at no additional cost if so requested by the individual customer. A cart? Barrel. Oh, barrel. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. so what, what, what we will offer to the, to the boards for the public's information is a range from 32 to 96. People want a smaller one for 32 for recycling, we will offer that. Anything else, Mr. Catino? No, I'm, um, I'm good. Right. Well, yeah. Mr. Kamala has answered some of my questions, but first of all, I, I agree with Mr. Chairman that um, the hour is late and it is an issue that I think people are interested in and they don't want to see something appear to be rushed through in the dead of night. Um, there are issues that we need to, questions we need to have answered. Um, and I got a lot of questions on this during the campaign and the debates. Um, single stream sounds like a you know wonderful thing, but I always said, well, the devil's in the details. Depends on you know what it entails. Issues like the size of the barrel. Um, is this you know how much trash will it hold? How, how does this relate to the amount that we have now? I certainly don't want it to result in even less trash being picked up than the two bags that already caused quite a stir. Um, you know, what does aesthetics mean? Does aesthetics mean it's the trash isn't blowing down the street, or is it a bright blue barrel? I don't think that's aesthetics. Mm -hmm. So what the thing looks like, um, I'm concerned about, you know, seniors, older people, people that have, you know, mobility issues, that if the thing is too big, it's hard for them to manage. They don't have a place to store it. Um, there are details that... I think if we could address it at a later meeting and maybe have some of these things laid out for us so we know exactly what we're talking about in these categories, um, it would save us a lot of time. But I don't think it's going to get answered to everyone's satisfaction and the public's right now. Thank you. Mr. Tedstone. Well, I'm coming into this issue somewhat blind historically. Uh, I listened to Mr. Kamalu's presentation uh, on the, on the uh, slide on the Option two said that there was a $40,000 a year uh, return to Hopkinton, uh, saving us $200,000 over the next five years. Is that a guarantee um, where, where it would be instead of $3.427 million, if, it, if we're going to get 40000 bucks back for the next five years, doesn't that bring that down to $3.227? In, in fact, to be clear on that piece, as I said, that saving is actually realized because of some of the work that we've already done mm -hmm. relative to what we are paying for the disposal of solid waste at Willie Brader. 
Yeah. Uh, and if we continue in this trend where we are reducing the amount of solid waste going to really greater, we'll continue to re realize our savings. And um, is there a reason why we're only looking at Harvey and why we don't look at like a, a BP or uh, automated waste or any of those? Um, my, the whole campaign that I ran to, to get sitting where I'm sitting is common sense. And um, I'm glad that we're, we have allegiance. I don't know if we have a binding contract with Harvey's, but uh, I'm glad that we have allegiance. But if we could go talk to three or four, five, 10, 15 other trash companies that work locally, and we could save even more money for the town payers, uh, that's, that's kind of my whole gig is, is uh, you know, I think, you know, moving forward, we're gonna need to tighten the belt. So uh, why don't we start here? I just in answer to that, that that's something that was actually discussed by the board a couple of months ago, huh? um, and uh, there's there's a service uh, as Mr. Kamalo explains it. There's a service on the part of the state um, that puts out quotes for all of these, so that you can see how they compare from uh, one service provider to another. And at that time, the board felt that uh, because they're local. Uh, and because by that service they weren't out of whack by any means, we would first pursue going for a contract with Harvey's, and if things just weren't going uh, going anywhere productive, then we would branch out and we would look at some of the others. So if so, if we looked at this contract and Harvey's looked appealing to us, and I know that they, the trash companies, like the DePalos, have a gentleman's agreement generally with Harvey's where they don't like to compete against each other, um, but if, if Harvey's came in at a dollar and we thought that was a good deal and then all of a sudden we decided to call out to uh, trash company A through X, um, would there be a reason why we wouldn't do that? Or like if you went to, um, like I, I'm, look, I'm liking it to buying a car. Mm -hmm. If you went to Herb Chambers and you said, I'm gonna buy this Ford and it's 45,000 bucks and then you drive to Jack Madden Ford and they said, we're gonna do it for 38. You think that's a great deal? You call back to, to Herb Chambers, and they're 34. Um, you know, is there a reason why we don't play each other, play these against each other? Like, I'm historically very, very cheap, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd like to be able to get the most bang for our buck. Is there a reason why we don't? And so do is it? Mr. Kamala, by the way. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, I'll get him beat. Yeah. Mr. Kamal, do you want to weigh in on this discussion here a little bit about you know why Harvey and why we're kind of pursuing the path we're on at the moment? I think, I think Mr. Mr. Stata said it eloquently. Um, we're also taking advantage of the existing relationship, uh, which has been beneficial to the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So I think there's a general um, feeling across the board um, that this is going to be tough for us to try and figure out tonight, uh, kind of back to my question about when you need to really know. Um, I don't think there's consensus that we don't want to do business with Harvey anymore. I don't think there's consensus that we want to do single stream recycling starting tomorrow. And I don't think there's consensus that we're going to 96 gallon whatevers. So I think we still have to work on this. And I think this is a very important issue for the community. And I think just for our two new members anyway, they should have an opportunity to walk around the neighborhood for the next week or two and say, hey, what do you think of trash? And you know, they're going to hear about it. Um, so I just, I, can we find a way to sort of keep this alive, but not really go too far down a path at the moment? Yes, I think I hear the board loud and clear on this issue. One other suggestion in terms, in terms of what you just said is perhaps we will hold an open house here at town hall uh, and invite residents to come and share their questions with us. Um, um, clear us other point, for your information, we did have the barrels here in the room for a good three, four months. <laughs> and we decided to move them because we didn't want to give the appearance that we were pushing the issue. So we will we'll bring the barrels back. We're very sensitive in terms of what color the, the, the town will choose. Uh, but to Brian's point, I think giving some more time doesn't hurt. And to help the process, staff will offer to have an open house where we'll accept questions. Uh, and, and receive additional input from residents, and we'll adv advertise that, that, that open house widely. Okay, so with that, I think the board is interested in looking at the trash issue. I think it's fair to say that we want to talk about it some more at some point in the near future, but we can't do anything now. We're gonna go out and sort of 
check the pulse of the community as we move forward. So let's table it. We'll keep it on our agendas, and we'll try and ha make something happen at some point. Um, but we're not going to do it this evening. Mr. Sestori. Very quickly so that the issue doesn't get lost. Uh, in the past, I know one of the issues was that Harvey's wanted to put an RFID chip in the barrels as well. And that was going to allow them to track them physically. Um, but I guess my fear at the time was, and, and you did confirm that, that, that they were able to uh, track by weight uh, according to chip. Do, do these proposals still include a chip in the trash barrels? In my negotiations, I have stressed to Harvey that that, that that issue may not be part of the discussions going forward, or may, depending on how, how okay. the board feels. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Thank Chair, you. I have just one more quick thing. That open house, uh, we had a, what, a, a close to an $80 million budget uh, at town meeting, and we got 150 people. No one's going to come out. I mean, if they're not going to come out for an $80 million budget, they're not going to come out and look at a color of a trash barrel. So that... But if we advertise it well. We advertise the town meeting well. I understand, but if we advertise it well and we give every, people every opportunity to weigh in. All right, then they can't then complain if whatever decision correct. we make. We have, to, All right. we have to give everybody every opportunity, but at some point we've been elected that's to make good. some decisions. So yep, we that's try good. to be as accommodating as we can, but we've got to move at some point. We're way too early in the process now to make that decision, good. which is kind of what I think we're headed towards right now. Anything else on trash? We should really say anything else on trash and recycling. It's a little cleaner that way. Mr. Kamal, you good? No, nothing else at this point. Everybody good? Good. Okay, we'll table that and we'll come back to it uh, at some point in the very near future. Anything else for the town manager's report? I don't uh, see anything, but just want to give you a shot. Okay. Future board agenda items. This is an opportunity, and uh, we don't have to do it all tonight, and we don't have to do it all in the next meeting, but as things come to mind, as, as, as citizens weigh uh, in on you or weigh in on different things on their mind uh, as you do your business in life in town, you bring them to the board and we build a list of items that we're going to try and tackle uh, at some point in the near future as we build agendas uh, for the meetings going forward. Uh, so with that, I'll go to the our Mr. Sostari and Mr. Catino first, and then we guys can jump in. Mr. Catino, future agenda items. Yeah, I want to, uh, what I mentioned before, look at uh, parking and what uh, possible uh, parcels the town might be able to purchase or lease or negotiate so that... Uh, we can improve the parking for downtown. Mr. Kamal, do we have a rolling action item list of uh, uh, open and future agenda items? Yes, we do. Is parking on there today? Parking is on that list. Okay, so we're going to have to try and chip away at that. Okay, anything else? That's it right now. Mr. Sestari, future board agenda. Uh, yeah, I had a request. Uh, that one of the former members, uh, Mr. Mosier, he was our liaison and uh, sitting member for the elementary school building committee. The elementary school building committee asked uh, actually for us to have it on this agenda where we replace him. Uh, they're they're kind of going hot and heavy in, uh, in some of their design phases right now. So they're looking for that member. So if we could take care of that at the next meeting, uh, I think that would be good. Uh, Mr. Kamal, if you could make that note for an appointment to the elementary school building committee. Anything else? Okay, uh, I'd like to see um, a downtown, uh, what are we calling the project now for Main Street, Main Street Corridor project. I'd like to see uh, an update on that uh, really every meeting, if at all possible, even if it's just five minutes. This is what's happened in the last two weeks. This is what they didn't happen in the last two weeks. I just would like to kind of keep our pulse on that a little bit closer for the next year. Uh, so I'd like to see that sort of added. Uh, routinely to the agenda as a future item. If, if I may, the staff shares that viewpoint too. Tomorrow I'm meeting with Cross Point to finalize the discussion on the realignment of the main city intersection. We've also had continuing conversations with the Trail Committee as well as Mass DOT in terms of the cycling uh, track coming down. And then finally, we also have indications. Yeah, the reason I ask is because of that accelerated opportunity. We don't we don't want to lose that by inaction on our part. So if we have a we, if we have a meeting update every meeting for five minutes and you're a reporter or however you want to do it, we, that would help us. Um, anything else for future board agenda items? 
Mrs. Ray. Um, yeah, in tandem with the master planning for the Irving Todaro property, I would like to see this board get out in front with discussions for the repurposing of Center School. Okay. Excellent. Anything else? That'll be in fine every for tonight. meeting. You're going to come up with stuff all the time, so we'll just we always have to prioritize and figure it out. But that just needs to be on the radar. That's one for the tonight. Okay, right. Mr. I Testin. I got nothing. You're good. Okay. Um, Mr. Kamal, any thoughts? No, I just say something if it done before that before that James. Yeah. We'll come back in a, in a minute for that, okay? Uh, how about any invites? I don't see it on here as uh, an agenda item. I'm not sure how Mr. Palika was handling it. Do we have any invites outstanding at the moment that you're aware of? Yes, there is one invite from the marathon committee. There will be the post marathon party. Uh, it's um, on which Thursday. Oh, yeah. We will resend that message to the board. We really, I really encourage the board to, to attend the meeting. Okay. Uh, there's also another invite that came in that came in yesterday uh, regarding the International Marathon Center. Uh, there may be uh, a group of individuals from the town who um, may travel to Cooperstown uh, just to see how Cooperstown has um, built that whole image around the base, uh, um, base, baseball. Yeah, baseball Hall of Fame. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about did you, uh, actually didn't we get the uh, the firefighters memorial in June? It's all here. The second Sunday in June. The June 12th. Firefighter Sunday. And and the uh, memorial. Serenity. And yeah, so I wanted to kind of come to the memorial memorial day specifically, Mr. Catino, for Memorial Day. Are you available to participate in that? As That's far as speaking, favorite, if we're requested to do so. I would love to. It's my favorite, one of the favorite celebration we have in town. If you could take that, um, and we want to coordinate that with the, that's the veterans. No, that's, um, is that Mike Whalen through the Veterans Celebration Committee, I think, organizes that, correct? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, and Jim Arabi has been doing that for a long time, too. I'm not sure if he's still involved, but if you could take that, uh, so we want to make sure we get him in touch with uh, the organizers in terms of speaking. And, you know, the parade itself is typically what the selectmen will do is we'll go to the parade start and walk to the various cemeteries and do that. And then we go to the center of town. And then those of us that are in attendance will sit with the folks at the gazebo and then someone will speak. Uh, Mr. Palaco did it last year. I've done it years in the past. I know Mr. Sestari. I think we've all done it at some point. He's been chair. But if you could do it as our vice chair, that would be great. Um, I'm traveling that weekend, so uh, I think this is perfect. Okay. Um, and with that, Mr. Kamal, you wanted to talk about something before we adjourn. Yes. I want to take this opportunity through the chair to thank Brenda McCain for a fantastic job as the town clerk over the last three months. When she went into the position, we all knew about her skills, her passion, and her commitment to the community. I can tell you the way how she handled town meeting, the election, and customer service in general, leaves me with no doubt that we're lucky to have her as a team member here at Town Hall. She's done a darn good job. And I want to, to take this opportunity to thank you. I completely agree. I think she's done an excellent job. Brenda, thank you for being here tonight, by the way, too. Uh, I thought the election yesterday was extremely well run. And uh, we really appreciate everything you're doing downstairs. And we can't do it without you. So we're going to keep, uh, keep that role focused uh, in our minds and make sure that we keep everything on the, on the right path here. So thank you for all you've done. If anyone else wants to jump in on that. But. I will. She did a, an outstanding job helping me. I was clueless when it came to this. And, and the whole committee run, you know, running for whenever I'd show up to the window, the, the her assistant would just look over to her and he's here back. So she'd come out and always with a smile. And, uh, and I'm very appreciative from uh, getting my campaign finances filed uh, correctly, which were not when I initially brought them to uh, the proper procedures, knowing that I have to turn my T-shirts inside out if I'm going to go in and vote, everything. She was tremendous. And for that, I'm completely uh, appreciative. Okay. And, uh, I, 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 I thank you. 
You know, um, you it was, it was seamless. You know, with the with the departure of our town clerk, and um, you just kept the place running and humming just the way it's supposed to have been. And thank you very much for doing such a great job, and, and I hope you continue to help us out. Yeah, brother. Uh, you know, thanks. Um, you know, it seems we continue to make improvements on that office, and you're no exception. Uh, and, it's, and it's not that in any way negative toward any of the uh, past town clerks. Uh, I know that Jerry was still making her changes and, and putting her mark on the office. And the two of you worked together, and I think you continued to carry her torch as well as your own. Uh, and you put a bit of a stamp down there. And um, yeah, I mean, we can't thank you enough for, for keeping things smooth. And uh, we look forward to uh, your, your continued mark that you can make on town. Anybody else? Okay, so Brenda, thank you so much. Uh, oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. Can I say something? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> no, awesome job. And to Brendan's point about always with a smile, no matter how frazzled you might have been, nobody ever knew it. You always treated every person as if they were the only one there you had to deal with. Always pleasant, always helpful. Um, just can't say enough good things about you, Brenda. Move to Hopkinton. Two, two yeah. or three quick points uh, <laughs> specific to other stuff now. Thanks. Um, one, um, Thank you for electing me to, to serve as your chair this year, uh, just so we're all sort of on the same page as we start out, uh, and it'll come tonight, especially after our, I think, our meeting with the planning board. And by the way, that was one of the most time-consuming things we'll ever have to do. Uh, that was a tough way to start the year, but we had to get through it, right? Um, there may be some media inquiries, uh, so as duly elected individuals, you can speak to whoever you want in the world. Uh, typically, you speak as an individual when you speak to the media, and the chair speaks to the media representing the board. So um, if you're not comfortable speaking to the media, you can always say, contact the chair. Um, when well, I've not certainly talked to them enough. Um, but you know, you, you, I'm never going to say who you can and cannot talk to. You can talk to whoever you want to, whenever you want to. Uh, but we try to sort of control how the media, not control how the media message goes out but just the message from the board wants to be consistent because we have five individuals but the board takes the board takes a vote and then that that one vote is the position of the board yep. and then the chair typically articulates that uh, so just want to put that out there and uh, finally uh, my apologies for us running over tonight but we did tackle the uh, the 20 minutes we allotted for that uh, <laughs> was a little off so we'll get a little bit better at time frames for schedules the last chair would have done a much better job. Yes, I It was like 20 metric minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor, aye. Thank aye. you all. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.